Cassius Clay, Mandalates, all day. Honus Wagner, Ted Williams, and Joe, Joe DiMaggio. DiMaggio. Joe McCarthy, Maravich, Finals, One Step Curry Kicks, Paul Wayner, Lloyd Wayner, Earl the Pearl Monroe. Trout back game used, of course. GU10 from JT Sports. Hondo, Pistol Pete, mentioned twice. His stuff is sweet. Rizzuto Gloves, holy cow. PSA slap photos now. Marciano title belt. belt, the champ they never beat. We didn't start the hobby. Began with cards and sets, then we never beat the next. We didn't start the hobby. Show great stuff to you, cause we're collectors too. Mint condition or above, Ollie Liston fight gloves, Jordan jerseys, Gretzky sticks, every Conlon shot, Jim Brown, Bobby Orr, Orr. Sherry Maggie's air roar, Bella check, headset, Schilling's bloody sock, Walter Payton, Dizzy Dean, Brooklyn's got, got a winning team, 55, team sign, 100 grand graded a nine, Buckner Ball can say go cap, Campanella catcher's mask, Willie Mays, Satchel Page, bid early and last, we didn't start the hobby. Began with cards and sets to memorabilia next. We didn't start the hobby. Show it's up to you, cause we're collectors too. Ty Cobb, Ink is Green, 33 First All-Star Team, Davy Crockett, Wax Box, Muscle Bound, Jimmy Fox, Rockwell, Tough Top Call, Texas League Baseball, Uncut Sheet, Black Socks, Ruth World Series Title Watch. Gowdy, Elijah Way, not included, send away. Fleer hoops, Astros, Astros. Doc's acid, no, no. Yogi quotes hysterical, a Ruzioni miracle. Sig collectors, all oh, no. Fellers rare as Gretzky goals. We didn't start the hobby. Began with cards and sets to memorabilia next. We didn't start the hobby. Show sure it's up to you, cause we're collectors too. Pop reports, eight men, title rings from Cleveland, press pins, rip kit, Babe Ruth sees Japan, ropes from WrestleMania, Ryan versus Ventura, old Judge Munson, Ali Rumbles Foreman, Shoeless Joe, Cabinet Card, Lou Alcinda to Jabbar, 500 million sold today, what else do we have to say? We didn't start the hobby, began with cards and sets, the memorabilia next, we didn't start the hobby. Boulder now, Bill Ripkin, Tiger Woods is back again. SGC's new slabs, Chesterfield vintage at Cy Young. Red, green, modern six, looks strange. Mustachio cap Anson, <laughs> Matthewson's the gentleman. Wax packs, Dodgers, Sebbets Field, Dodgers. SP3 Joe's guarantee. Susie Culver, kiss me. <laughs> Black Swamp, Sneed Swing, Fridge Perry's huge ring. Home run jersey worn by Mantle, Jackie Robinson, rookie flannel. We didn't start the hobby. Began with cards and sets to memorabilia next. We didn't start the hobby, but when we are gone, we'll go on and on.
Cassius Clay, Mandalates all day. Honus Wagner, Ted Williams, and Joe DiMaggio. Joe McCarthy, Maravich. Finals, One Step Curry kicks. Paul Wayner, Lloyd Wayner, Earl the Pearl Monroe. Trout back game used, of course. GU10 from JT Sports. Hondo, Pistol Pete, mentioned twice. His stuff is sweet. Rizzuto Glove, holy cow. PSA slide photos now. Marciano, title belt. belt, the champ they never beat. We didn't start the hobby. Began with cards and sets, then we never beat it We didn't start the hobby. Show great stuff to you, cause we're collectors too. Mint condition or above, Ollie Liston fight gloves, Jordan jerseys, Gretzky sticks, every Conlon shot, Jim Brown, Bobby Orr, Sherry Maggie's air roar, Bella Jack, headset, Schilling's bloody sock, Walter Payton, Dizzy Dean, Brooklyn's got a winning team, 55, team sign, 100 grand grade at a nine, Buckner Ball, Canseco cap, Campanella catcher's mask, Willie Mays, Satchel Page, bid early and last. We didn't start the hobby. Began with cards and sets to memorabilia next. We didn't start the hobby. Show sure it's up to you, cause we're collectors too. Ty Cobb, Ink is Green, 33 first all-star team, Davy Crockett, Wax Box, Muscle Bound, Jimmy Fox, Rockwell, Tough Call, Texas League, Baseball, Uncut Sheet, Black Sox, Ruth World Series, Title Watch. Gowdy, Lajaway, not included, send away. Fleer hoops, Astros, Doc's acid, no, no. Yogi quotes hysterical, La Ruzioni miracle. Sig collectors, all oh, no. Fellers rare as Gretzky goals. We didn't start the hobby. Began with cards and sets to memorabilia next. We didn't start the hobby. Show it's up to you, cause we're collectors too. Pop reports, eight men, title rings from Cleveland, press pins, Ripken, Babe Ruth sees Japan, ropes from WrestleMania, Ryan versus Ventura, Old Judge Munson, Ali Rumbles Foreman, Shoeless Joe, Cabinet Card, Lou Alcinda to Jabbar, 500 million sold today, what else do we have to say? We didn't start the hobby, began with cards and sets, the memorabilia next, we didn't start the hobby. Vulgar now, nah, Bill Ripkin, Tiger Woods is back again. SGC's new slabs, Chesterfield, vintage at Cy Young. Red, green, modern six, looks strange. Mustachio Cap Anson, <laughs> Matthewson's the gentleman. Wax packs, Dodgers, Ebbets Field, Dodgers. SP3 Joe's guarantee. Susie Culver, kiss me. <laughs> Black Swamp, Sneed Swing, Fridge Perry's huge drink. Home run jersey worn by Mantle, Jackie Robinson, rookie flannel. We didn't start the hobby. Began with cards and sets to memorabilia next. We didn't start the hobby, but when we are gone, it will go on and on and on and on and on. Hello, collectors, hobbyists, and extended bidding auction enthusiasts. Welcome to our live auction closing. Boy, a little case of deja vu there, Tony. Oh, I'll tell you, and you're not even <laughs> reading it off a teleprompter or anything. That's just memory. My name is Mike Provenzale. I'm the production manager here at Auction Heritage Auctions, and this man on my right 
the hurliest, <coughs> burliest, most enthusiastic the man in the bo- in the hobby, Mr. Tony Geezy. Tony, Again, welcome back. I can't wait. This is one of my favorite nights of the year. Auction Absolutely. night. Absolutely. We, put all, we put all this work in, and this is the payoff. Our summer trading card auction is closing tonight. It's going down some of the rarest and most iconic cards in the hobby, and they're all going to close tonight. Extended bidding begins in almost three hours. T minus. Give me an update. Two hours and 32 minutes. Two hours, 32 That's minutes. The official, so get your bids clock. in now because you have to have your bids in to continue bidding an extended bidding session. Don't get shut out. Yeah, and we How many are. times have you. I've had that in the past where you forget to bid, and then all of a sudden, Tony, it's you forget things. Once and in a I, while. I haven't rarely to do that. Rarely. But let me, tell me, are you excited about tonight? Rhetorical question. You get excited about everything, up to and including ketchup. <laughs> so ketchup. we know he's excited. <laughs> we know you guys are excited. We're gonna spend the night. We're gonna take you through extended bidding. We're gonna talk about some of the biggest lots in the auction. We're gonna have on our biggest experts, the brightest minds in the hobby. Whoa, some of well, the no, wor- I mean you're kind of trumping these guys up a little too much, aren't you? I mean, some of the brightest minds and some of the worst hair on top of it. So <laughs> wow, you know who I'm talking about. But it's yeah. gonna be a great night. If you're on Facebook watching this, hello Facebook, and hello to all the bots out there on Facebook watching as well, we welcome you. You can ask us questions about what's going on in the auction, Uh, we do free appraisals tonight, Uh, personal questions about Tony, also encouraged, so go ahead and lob those out there. Let's get to know Tony a little bit. It's been a while, Tony. It's been a, it has been a while. You've missed a few auctions. I uh, was on the road a little bit and doing shows where and whatnot, were but you? we're... Oh, no, don't listen. Okay. The people aren't interested in that. Tony's a, know that a road warrior, if it's you fun. will. Uh, if you have a great collection, he'd love to come out there and meet you. Maybe have a fish fry. Absolutely. Is that on the docket? That, oh, that's always on the docket. <laughs> Chicago, Wisconsin, Minnesota. I will have one in Minneapolis. You can tell by the accent when he says those cities that he's legit <laughs> and he means it. So, Straight from the Midwest. Big night. There's a lot going on. So we've got session one closing tonight. Tomorrow night, another huge event. It's session two the David Hall T206 collection, which is just a mammoth assembly of the monster. The most impressive one ever put together, over 5,200 cards, and we are humbled to have the honor of selling it. We've got a few hundred in this sale. Then in September, we have part two coming up. We're gonna have another 500. In December, it's part three. We're gonna have another 500, and then 2020, look out. We're going to pile it on. More David Hall. Wow. It's really incredible. He came out here, shot some videos we're going to show you, and some of them are up with his lots. You can watch them right now. Uh, one of the most illustrious collectors in the hobby and just a great guy. Yeah, one of the biggest names. I mean, he <laughs> he helped get everyone, PSA started. I everyone mean, who's made a dollar in this hobby owes him a debt of gratitude. They do. And uh, Or if they lost a dollar. Yeah, no, even, I mean, then, even then you should thank him bit. because it's a lot of fun. It whether, is. Whether you win is. or lose, it's a lot of fun. So uh, we're going to be talking about that. That's tomorrow night. And then on Saturday, we're going to have session three, which is more great material. Session three? I yeah. thought there was session one and session three two. Three sessions. Wow, if you got we're our getting catalog, big. Uh, you might have thought it was a phone book, and you were wondering, people still get phone books? <laughs> but no, it's a, I believe, 18-pound catalog. I'm just guessing. Is that a record? Because I had to carry the boxes around. Oh, boy. So uh, it is a record for it's us. It's a heritage. Okay. Another world record for heritage, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> let's clap it up. So, you know, let's get started immediately. And uh, some say save the best for last. And Not Mike Provenzale. As guess, yeah. Production manager. We don't, we don't agree with that. No, he brings so up the big dogs right off the bat. We're going to begin with heritage vice president and hobby luminary, Mr. <laughs> Derek Grady. Derek, come on out. And we speech, thank the speech, uh, speech. hundreds of people in the crowd for being so polite and quiet. It's very nice. When you see a uh, celeb like this roll on, uh, I know it's tough to keep control. Welcome, Derek. Thank home. you for joining us. <laughs> Glad to be here. Derek works out of the East Coast, but when our auctions are closing, he stops by and graces us with his presence. He also dressed up. Uh, you see he's got a long sleeve shirt on there, Tony. A little bit nicer. Uh, than much Jesus. nicer than mine. Yeah. 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 Very classy. Like the cuffs. Very classy. Um, so are you excited tonight, Derek? Oh, very. What are your feelings? What are your thoughts? Um, I'm excited. It's a great auction. Lots of bitter participation. Excited for extended bid. And you do a lot to put it together. Tell the people what uh, how many hats you wear as far as this auction is oh, concerned. Oh, a lot. 
A lot of hats. A lot, a lot of, hats. of hats. Just not the social media stuff. Yeah, you've got uh, that with the, the Gucci. Yeah, that's he, brings in, <laughs> he, he, he brings it in though. He he brings it in. He brings it in. I just bring the stuff in. So Derek deals with clients. Uh, he also helps process. He does a little writing even. A little bit. A little Scoot bit of writing. in here, Derek. The people want to see all of you. Okay. No need to hide. All no need okay. to hide. I'm pretty uh -huh. big. I should be able to. Do <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, let's talk about some of these cards. Uh, let's do it. Yeah, you gave me some that you wanted to talk about, and we're gonna lead off with this big boy right here. With this condition, rarity, and Hi, rarity. I'm David Hall. Well, I've been a baseball fan since I could uh, uh, barely walk. Uh, here, sitting on a baseball field, uh, how, how much fun is this? You, uh, you look at that field and you just want to grab a bat and take a couple of swings. Uh, sports is a very big part of our culture in this country, and in America, sports starts with baseball. Who among us hasn't played Little League or has a son or grandson that plays Little League baseball? You go to the field, you watch the children playing baseball. It's such fun. If you're lucky enough, you continue to play and if you're good enough, maybe you play a little high school ball. What do you do afterwards? Well, you go to the okay. game. And, and there's two different versions of it. One says buttercream on it, the other one doesn't. But super rare issue. Now again, it's not the eye appeal on the issue right. is not like a gouty issue or something. It's a uh, simple design. Simple design, black and white, thin, not a regular card, an odd shape, of course. But this is the highest graded example. And oh, it's the best Bay card Root, in the set. And the there best card in the set, super tough card. Less than 10 known. How, so many, how many do you own? Uh, zero. Zero. Okay. Okay. I never just, even had the opportunity to Just going to get that out there. <laughs> I own zero. Did they all come out in 89 i mean did, the did they, no, came out. Where, they were all found in 89 or no what? this How is when ruth was discovered there was previously unknown wow that must okay. have been quite the reveal were you at the 1989 national i was not but i was probably at my high school graduation <laughs> so. oh, you graduated can we get a photo of that i want to see breaking news it's breaking news. news i did can we I get the breaking news too, sounder it or not. Yeah. there it is Great. i don't Thank use you. it for my baseball card expertise though <laughs> i'm surprised you did you didn't major in that major in, in baseball college I know yes wrote it. journalism journalism journal okay. yes electronic he's media he's a writer that's why you Turn, yeah okay turned and into Ernest Hemingway rolls over in his grave every time oh my goodness tough crowd here tonight so that's one of the great things about working at Heritage is the uh, extensive rarities we see like that. I'd yes. never seen that card before. before I never. Came. I we yeah, we haven't sold one, and this is estimate two hundred thousand. Wow. It's right now. I believe it's in the hundred thousand dollar range plus the buyer's premium. So plenty of room left. Time to get your bids in. A couple hours left to get those bids in. Yeah, and if you don't own one of these, you need it. You and do. if you're watching this, likely you don't own one. I'm guessing. Odds are. Yeah, odds are. Let me hand that over here. Where's Magnus? So I'm going to move on to another one here. Also, Ruth. Did you pick little, that one for me? A little more traditional. This one's for me to talk about. Right whoa, now. whoa. Oh, but, uh, I'll let you put it in the Here we go. Right I there. get to hold it. You this get to be the, the model. 1933 Gowdy yeah, Babe Ruth. There's four, <laughs> four Ruths in the 33 Gowdy set, of course. It's number 144. <laughs> and it's a PSA 8. So that's definitely a uh, hallmark of the hobby, that it card is. right there. I believe I've seen it on some uh, heritage marketing materials Likely. as well. Yeah. Very iconic card. And uh, that's a beautiful example. Bright color, sharp registration, and four quality corners. That's all you need right there. Uh, I love the Gaudi set personally, so I had to pull that one out. Uh, one of my favorite tidbits about Gaudi is uh, 1932, their profits were 400 grand. Then they decided to make the Gaudi set, one of the most beautiful sets, still stands up. 1933, the U.S. had their worst economic year in the nation's history, still to date. And their profits more than quadrupled that year just because of the Gaudi set. Wow. Really? Selling for Good one back. penny each. One penny each. Wow, I didn't so know that. So that's how powerful it was right there. I can't comment on the taste of the gum. Maybe the gum was great. <laughs> it uh, probably was. But I, I can't comment on that. Tony, you've ever had uh, I've 33 never Gaudi had gum? 33 Gaudi gum. But Anybody if you, somebody has, yeah, has, I was it. waiting for that. Yeah. 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 Uh, we well, will definitely put a video up of Tony. Didn't Derek have some? Like, it was 70s. I think it was 70s. 70s. Okay, so which, 70s. I mean, 70s. That's not that tough. 
It was terrible. Was it powder? It I mean, you, turn to powder, you were yeah. born when that gum was created. I was it's born 33 in 73. Thirty-three Gaudi, Gaudi gum. That's <laughs> totally different. <laughs> Gaudi gum. So yeah, uh, people love collecting Gaudi. There's a great example. Uh, that should do about sixty thousand. We're thinking. I believe um, the current bid is higher than that. Wow. And look at this guy. He's got all the current bids right off the top of his oh, head. Oh, he knows. I'm taking a shot. What's your trick? What's your trick? What's your secret? You know, just, you know, being in it morning, noon, and night, 24-7. <laughs> all right, hand that bad boy over here. Let's move on. I've got another one for you. Is this for Derek? It's for Derek. Right. Well, what, you want to talk about a card? Yeah. You jump, might know the player. Jump, <laughs> you don't know if it's real or fake. I mean, you're a memorabilia guy. <laughs> So this Thanks, is a Derek. 1949 <laughs> Bowman, Jackie Robinson, uh, considered his rookie card along with the 48 Leaf card. That's a beautiful. This example. card is spectacular as far as the color, the centering, the uh, you know the focus of the card, everything about it. This is you can see a lot of 49 Jackie Robinsons out there, but the color on this is spectacular. That red Corners is just registration, blazing. yeah, the blue against the red. And a lot of people prefer this to the 48 leaf card, which is a headshot, a big headshot. Right. This is just a nicer looking. A little more portrait. You got the Dodgers yes. in there too. There we are. This is a great example of the card. That's why I, I picked this one to put out here on display. Yeah. Show the people. That's why we're here to educate and entertain. And it's at about half of the estimate. Plenty of room. Great card. Great investment. Jackie. Rookie card. What more do you have Anything to say of his right has there. just kind yeah. of just continued to go up in value. It's Absolutely. Like through the years. Yeah. You, it looks like you have more. I have another Jackie card oh. right here. Uh, you'll see a theme going with my selections. Um, so this is the uh, 1953 Tops Jackie right there, and uh, this came across my desk the other day, and it is fantastic. Um, just a stunning example, bold and vibrant colors. Isn't and it? Isn't it the bottom corner is always chipped on those? Yeah. In the black, I mean, the black yeah. or the red. But it's also the number one card in the set. And this example, oh, that is okay. Yeah. Okay, is particularly nice for the issue as well. Not all nines are created equal. This is a nine, and it would nine again today, even if it was graded early on. As standards have gotten progressively tighter, this card is. Let me take. Uh, Look at it real quick. Yeah, inspect it. That's Look why at that. Uh, centered. A lot of people well don't centered. know. Uh, Derek was formerly the head grader at SGC. So uh, a lot two of different stints. <laughs> two <laughs> different stints. Wow. And but what so caused that? Can we, can we get into that? What happened there? Uh, uh, I, the I, hiatus. Know. The hiatus. Did you go you to know. Tibet for a year. Or something <laughs> find I yourself. went to see the Dalai Lama. <laughs> yeah. you know, I was. You got out, an audience? Well, I was out in the desert with uh, Ricky Williams. Or <laughs> Shout out. I found myself. Uh, no, and then, uh, and then I came to Heritage after the, the after last the stint. Turned it over to, to Scott. Everybody knows that. <laughs> oh, wow. There. Wow. I mean, big fan. One good, of the good, good guys man. in this industry. Good, good, good guy. Love in him. Industry. <laughs> so with this card being the number one card, and we know why number one cards are condition sensitive, correct? Yes. Rubber bands. Rubber bands. That's how people stored their cards. And this was the card on the top. You shove it in your pocket. And you shove it in together. Goes in the box. Number one card always gets dinged up. The last card gets dinged up. This card managed to stay away from that. That's why this is an outstanding example for this issue. So over 1,500 submissions of this card to PSA, only eight at this level and only one higher. Wow, believe that. Yes. So top-notch stuff we're talking about right here. And uh, you can own it tonight. You can go to ha.com and bid on this right now. you still got a couple hours to go before extended bidding begins. And anybody out there watching, if you have any questions or comments, hop right in. We do have a couple comments. All right, let's hear it. Said. It hey, looks Jay. like Tony left his tuxedo in the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, please help the young lad. Out. You tell Jay to bring one to the you national. Tell him right now. Uh, Jay, bring I'll one to the, the national. national. I'll wear it at the national. Oh, yes. Wow. That's a guarantee right hot there. That's going to have. <laughs> oh, my. Jay, bring a hot pink. Uh, well, actually, Tony was wearing a very trendy and fashionable tuxedo, but he wanted to wear it all day, and then lunch happened. And, and you don't want to see it after that. Well, uh, we mentioned yes. ketchup earlier. You can see <laughs> <laughs> well, Ooh. thank you, Jay, for the question. Hope you're enjoying the show. Anybody else, jump in. We'd love to talk to you guys. What do you got there, Derek? Tell the people. Tell the people. Okay. So this is a 1953 Topps Mantle, like the Jackie. Um, this is an extremely condition-sensitive issue. In the red corner, this is where it's typically going to be chipping. Okay. 
This is centered very well. No, not even a tick out of the red. This is an accurately graded nine. Very popular mantle card. This is after it. second tops issue of mantle. Yeah. You know, beautiful card. 50, 52 mana we know is iconic. 53 is right there as well, especially in this condition. Is Dipped it going up, up? Have you seen it? Or what are the, like, the uh, trends on that card? On the 53 or on the 52? On the 53. The 53, well, sure. Is it getting, I mean, it's I mean, very are, popular. Are, are people getting, getting more into it, do you think? Or? I think so. I mean, I think all Mantle cards drive the hobby. I was just out discussing this with a, with a major bidder of ours. Why Mickey Mantle? New yeah. York. The championship. I mean, he just fit that triple '50s crown. era of American ideals yeah. and good-looking I mean, guy, blonde had, hair, blue eyes. He had it all going for him. My eyes are green. You know, <laughs> That's okay. Right. You're still. You don't yeah. have to tell me. I've stared into those eyes <laughs> okay, many times. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Wow. Shared some moments. Um, <laughs> now this what is a an team outstanding example. It's it's at the, the estimate was 300. Um, I could have estimated it higher. Um, it's at 300, I believe, currently, plus okay. the buyer's premium. So it. It could go anywhere between three and five hundred thousand, but this is a particularly um, accurately graded nine. It yeah, would nine again today. Card. Derek Grady says it. You know it's true. I I, I try. <laughs> <laughs> He's humble, so I brought it. Yeah, funny jump question in. Question from Jason asking: What do we think the over under on pounds of meat Tony will eat during the course of the national? Well, we eat Gibsons <laughs> every day at lunch. Well, that is a guarantee oh, yeah. every day. Probably so, be eating there at night too. If you want to see us, phenomenal. come by Gibsons at lunch. Yeah, we will be Brazilian there. steakhouse. Tell him I want to. I want to. I, I may have to go to. I may have to try that again. But we'll put the over under at. Uh, I'm going to say at least 75 pounds. <laughs> you would think he, with umpiring that he does, does everybody know he umps? Yes. Okay, I mean, we Facebook. I don't know if everybody that. out there knows. Now they do. Now, they do. now he, the whole he world knows. Umpires is a moonlighting gig. <laughs> I mean, it, <laughs> Major leagues, right? To pay for my collection. You're in the bigs? No. No, oh, you get there. Uh, you get there. Don't worry about yeah, it. Your next raise, you won't have to up again. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> when you lose weight, though, umping, or you're not running around, you're just sitting. I'm running. I'm running around, but I you you're know, just the eating Gatorade. more than you. No, oh, you heard me I say guess. 75 pounds of meat in a week, right? <laughs> I mean, that's a factor. That's a factor. Okay. Fish fries. I'll have an answer after the national. I'll kind you're gonna of, weigh everything. I'm gonna weigh everything we before, and we'll have... maybe we'll post it every meal. We'll post uh, <laughs> the weight of Tony's meal. There you Is go. everybody out there interested in that? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm sure they are. Seems like oversharing. Is that even possible? Possible anymore in the internet oversharing? No, no, yes. no, no. All right, we'll do it. <laughs> internet, you asked for it. Heritage delivers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so another mantle card here. This one needs no introduction whatsoever. But uh, give it one. This is the 1952 <laughs> tops number 311 Mickey Mantle. Wow. Uh, beautiful example. Uh, this is a PSA seven. Uh, you see a lot of 52 Tops mantles out there, but this is a premium example right Especially here. Especially in our auctions. We have them in every budget range from, I believe, we have maybe an authentic in the sale the whole way up, to, whole way up to a 7 and probably 5 or 6 in between there. If you don't yeah. have a 52 Tops mantle, it's a great auction to get one. Like Derek said, we have uh, plenty of different grades um, from, yeah, authentic all the way up to this 7. So uh, this one... We're thinking about a hundred grand or yep. so, uh, but this is the most iconic card in the hobby. If you're a card collector, you got to have one. In this some card grade. drives the hobby. It does. Fifty-two. This is. And we're just riding in the back. This seat. was the <laughs> Wagner for me. Okay. Growing okay. up in the '80s, it was the fifty-two because uh, Wagner was unattainable. Sure. I'm in high school. And it still is for a lot of people. Well, yeah, and this this card became you know for my generation the the Wagner card. When Everybody was uh, how one. old were you when you got your first fifty-two? Time? I was going to ask if you ever got one. No, I never got one. You've never had never? one. No. Still to this day? Well, you know, again, I'm a Clemente guy from the Pittsburgh area. Right. So I'm a Clemente sure. guy. Okay. I have signed mantle cards. Okay. Okay. That's pretty good. I like those. I like signed rookie cards and signed cards. And, of course, I, I passed on the chance to buy a 52 mantle signed. Of course, well, you know, waited too long. We all make mistakes. The, yeah. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Whoa! Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. Um, <laughs> no, I, I would have bought one in, you know... Uh, and when I was in my 20s, it was in VG condition or something, and I just couldn't find the right VG condition, so I was just like, yeah, okay, you know what. You'll get one, you'll get You're one. You're very discriminating, yes. so it yeah. uh, just didn't meet I like your, high grade your lofty and standards. Yeah, and the high grade is just <laughs> out of the price range. So, But yeah, so if you need one, we've got them for you tonight, and probably in the next auction, too. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we've made, we've made a habit. We of always it. have mantles. We have a New York theme going on here, guys. Yeah, we do. Uh, I mean, it is all New York. 
Well, they're on the East Coast, so it's a little later for them. So we got to do the New York no, stuff. Do it first, early, and then yeah. we'll we'll do we'll LA. Get to the trout cards later. Ah, oh. boy, you're smart, Mike. <laughs> okay. So Thank here we have, out. you know, one of the the king of uh, well, definitely the king of post war football cards. Absolutely. Okay. So the 1965 tops decided to go to the tall boy issue. Oversized card. So imagine how kids kept these cards. Okay. Oversized. This Broadway Joe rookie card, graded an eight, strictly graded, gorgeous color, centering. Um, it's a card that everybody is on every collector's want list in football, and you know it's it's iconic. They're just on their list, period. Uh, yeah, you know that's one of those iconic cards and that everybody wants. The and fact that it's oversized makes it more condition sensitive. Uh, just a great. I believe there's four nines graded, and that's it. Wow. And a nine's worth several hundred thousand dollars, so a nice eight is still a good investment. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Very difficult to get an eight on it. This was recently graded as well, so it is under the tight scrutiny of PSA. So solid eight, really great card. yellow great background card. on yeah. that one right great there. Great card. Yeah. Thanks for bringing out the football too, because uh, I'm going to do the same. Okay. And. What's uh, that? Who's this? The Chuck Benaric? No, no, it's way not tittle, you my tittle. <laughs> I saw the 60. <laughs> that's the 1950 no, Bowman. Y.A. Tittle and yeah. SGC. Jim oh. Mint 10. Wow. Gentlemen, this is the ultimate SGC example right there. Uh, and you can see it looks fantastic. It does. Perfection in centering and uh, great colors. Snow white borders. Yeah, it's, it's a lovely one. Um, and a hard one to find. So in a 10. Very difficult rookie card. 50 Bowman. The smaller version. What do we go from the, super size yeah. to the smaller See, version? You know, yeah. I put a little thought into you this. Did. I put okay. a little thought into this. Little yeah, oversized. this is one of the smaller ones. So uh, condition issues can come from the smaller cards, too. They can. Uh, it doesn't have to be, be the big one. Size doesn't matter, they say. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it does. Everybody, but, yeah, everybody chortles. Um, but a great example, and uh, you might even say an underrated card. You, Under, you don't hear people no, talking about this one a lot. but uh, Not really, but it's a 1950 Bowman issue. has a ton of rookie cards in it. It's a great set. And it's a um, great design. Great so. design. Again, it's Y Tito Hall of Fame rookie card. Outstanding example. Odds are you're not going to find another 10. It's tough to find a 9 on these, this card. Right. So, and great you know, example. any collector knows when you say the top, the ultimate, the best of the man, best, the best of the, the best. best, like we say about Derek Grady, well, and, uh, <laughs> that's something you want to look there for, we go. you want to add to your collection. Uh, that was the recent the Derek Grady? Going. Look you at this. You turn the recent bit really screen Hill on and these two guys. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't love know if he was watching wrestling or he was watching the recent bit screen. I, you know, yeah, so nice there's a few the different auction. ways you could be watching the show right now. You could be watching on Facebook. You could be watching on our homepage. But you can also watch on our recent bid activity screen, which we recommend as well. It has the live updating the bids as they come in. They go to the top of the screen. You can click right on the lot right there and go take a look so you can see what's trending, what's happening, what's going on. Uh, highly recommended. That's what Derek's doing right now maybe you can play a little video game well, i just want to make sure he wasn't watching wrestling you just don't know what <laughs> i doing. sit and hit refresh and i know it says not to refresh your computer <laughs> oh, no, screen as soon as they say don't that's what we do so yeah, he's I mean, great at listening to instructions <laughs> <laughs> no i'm serious i love what i love the auction night watching the auction and watching the bids come in I've done it for what 15 I'm years now. Wasting the heritage bandwidth. Yes, I'm flat, sorry. Fresh. So I'm sorry, Mr. Shout out to our IT team. And yes. one of our biggest webs, you know, one of the parts of our website that gets the most hits is the recent bid screen. Sure. On and the sports the department page, most which I had to beg Paul in Mitchell hobby. to do. Okay, by the way, Paul. A <laughs> Paul's shout out not to you. watching. Thank Paul's you, Paul. Watching. You better hope he's not watching. <laughs> if you are watching, remember whose idea it was to put the recent bid screen on the sports site. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Trademark it. Trademark. <laughs> if you trademarked it. Israel is watching on YouTube, and he's, hey, he's watching from the Bahamas. So Whoa! Oh, all right. Jealousy. <laughs> Look wow. at this guy. Israel, have a margarita for me, if you would. Yeah. My tie. <laughs> and then Lee you. is watching on Facebook asking, is Tony a football expert? Tony is a football well, expert. Well, I think he is. And yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the Green Bay Packers. But I, but, <laughs> it, but it's started know. to branch off with other teams now. I mean, I he's one of the greatest love reading, minds love reading the about yeah. the history of the game. Yeah. I you know, know, whether it be the Steelers teams, the Raiders teams. You know, there's so much Dallas history. Cowboys. I haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, it's a bad what memory kind, what with kind the of Packers. American art. No, I'm just yeah, saying no, no. America's but team? it's <laughs> heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Tony is a uh, especially when it comes to jerseys. Uh, he knows everything there is to know about jerseys. So if you got a question about them, uh, 
Let them know. Let, let us know. Let us right know. Now. Uh, Send me an email. He'll gladly give you his cell phone <laughs> number too, um, <laughs> so you can text him if you're at a garage sale and you find something. If you're at the National, he'll stop by. He'll hug you. Yeah, <laughs> there's no doubt. <laughs> a in free hugs. Hotel. A good time to mention. We're all going to be at the National. Everyone you're going to see on screen tonight. We're at booth eight twenty four. Uh, we're going to have some amazing material on display. Nothing from this card sale because this will all close. But we have our platinum auction coming on. We'll have which cards, is cards, and memorabilia. So. Really some legendary pieces right there, and uh, we're going to have some David Hall T206 cards, including a Honus Wagner, which we talked about, yeah. will be on display. And <clears throat> we also have a vintage sports photography auction going on, and I've been looking through that the past oh, few days. We've been proofing great the catalog. Stuff. Yeah, it's a great catalog. It is catalog. some amazing photos in there. If you're not into collecting photos, it's a good thing to jump into. Uh, it's not wildly priced. Um, and you can not at this point, but I think in time off, it yeah. is. It is There's going. So now's a good time to get in. Um, we got all sports. We've got some entertainment stuff in there too. Some Beatles. Beatles Elvis. butcher cover. Uh, One of my favorite photos. And there's a really? great uh, a Connery James cover. Bond photo Type in there. Oh. I'm say that too, that caught my eye. Okay. Um, so look at that. We're going to have that all on display at the National. We're going to have a bunch of events and tricks. Come by booth 824. Events? Can you give us more on that? Or is that. Is uh, that... Tony Geezy autograph signings. No, no. Oh, okay. yeah, he events. Does, he does photos too. Yeah, uh, right. We're going to have some giveaways. Um, we actually, uh, if you're a fan of the Honus Wagner card, we have a huge Honus Wagner cutout that you can put your face in and take a picture. Put yourself <laughs> right on the iconic card. So you can be Honus okay. Wagner. You can be Honus Wagner. Um, awesome. And we're doing free appraisals all the time. And just come by and talk to the hobby. Uh, take a look at what we've got, and we'd love to talk to you. Now they're coming in. There we go. Now, Derek, you got another card you want to talk about here? To switch up the sports on it. Ooh. So not a particularly rare card, but... The 86 Fleer Michael Jordan, PSA 10. An wow. iconic card, you know, on the Mount Rushmore Never get tired basketball of seeing cards. That. Never get tired of seeing it. My story on this card is 1986. Taking the bus down before I had my driver's license down to the wholesaler. <laughs> oh, this is good. Down Keep to, going. I didn't even finish the story yet. How do you know that it's No, good? taking the bus. Thank you. Okay, taking the bus. Oh, the fact that I took the bus. Ketchup? Okay. Was there any Derek taking oh. the bus. <laughs> kidding. I'm I sorry. actually... <laughs> so one day I actually skipped school. Faked. Faked being sick. Hmm. We don't recommend that. No, I graduated. It's over. There okay. could be kids watching this. That's fine. If As long as they're buying baseball cards. Right. So I go down to the go wholesaler. Go to the card shop. <laughs> there are boxes and boxes of 1986 Fleer basketball at 12 bucks. Wow. I basically trip over them to get to the 86 Tops baseball, which you can still buy 86 <laughs> baseball for at 12 bucks. bucks. No, for 12 bucks. So you saw them. Baseball. You saw them. Dude, in, I walked in, past them. Yes. Now, All on, that right. Hall of Fame rookie talent in nobody there. Nobody was cared about eighty. Nobody cared about basketball cards at that time. Yeah. Remember, after 80, 81, 81, 82 tops, mm -hmm. they stopped making them. I mean, I was then they went into old, Star Company. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Yep. <laughs> so they went in easy. Probably wasn't even born. I was seventy six. I was. <laughs> oh, I wasn't alive. smart enough to buy them. And well, I. Don't, but I mean, but yeah. we never had them in our. That's area. why they're valuable. Now. Yeah. Yes. So. They didn't have cards in Wisconsin. No, no, we had tops just baseball. Cheese. No, just we we had the a Packers. little store, <laughs> mainly football. The basketball okay. we didn't. Yeah. So I needless to say, these boxes are now a box of '86 Fleer basketball is at least forty thousand dollars. '86 tops of baseball is twelve bucks. '86 <laughs> Fleer baseball might be fifty bucks, and those were the boxes I was buying. And we I have a the we have a box '86 box in this sale, correct? I would like to think we tops. No. <laughs> no, 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 I was going to say, we like to think we don't, but we don't. We there's don't. some consignment directors Fleer, that would try and put it in. I feel in. like I've seen one. Maybe it's in the There is one. There is one currently. Okay. Okay. So and if so you want to remedy Derek's mistake, uh, you can pick yeah. that up right now. We've all been there. But I did go yeah, back then when there. the boxes were up to a couple hundred bucks and bought them and opened them. and I had. Did you really? Yeah. But I mean, I didn't keep any. Dude, once it got to like 10 grand, I was going to sell the box no matter what. <laughs> yeah. I didn't save it until it was going to go to 40. But I did open... Open up boxes. You're an impulsive There's, man. You get about three sets to a box, so the box breaks outstandingly well. Okay, so you'd get three sets, you'd sell your sets, go buy more boxes. So at one point, I accumulated like six sets. I still saved my best wow. set. Wow. Yeah. So I still have my best set. You still have it, though. Yeah, but I never graded them because I'm a grader, so I didn't care what the grader said, but I didn't send in my Jordan. I'm sure it's not going to be a 10, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a 9 at least. So <laughs> There we go. He's <laughs> got confidence. Right there. <laughs> at least a 9, though. So it's a great card, great investment, iconic. Right yeah, there, and those the are essence. just going up. As yeah, we've they're seen. they're we've, not going down. We've had quite a few tens, and the price just increases. So Correct. jump on now. Don't wait. 
Don't make the mistake Derek made. I say that a lot, but no, <laughs> this time in reference to cards. Um, yeah, so it's a lot of fun having you on, Derek, and Thanks. always great having you in town. Um, but before we leave, I've got a quick hypothetical for you. Oh, <clears throat> so, sure. for the rest of your life, would you rather have Anthony Davis' eyebrow as your mustache or two of King Kelly's mustaches as your eyebrows? <laughs> I Anthony Davis's eyebrows. Yeah, the whole yeah. thing. So it's King like, Kelly, right I here. Love it's finally it. manicured how he does it, but uh, that's gonna be I'll your take... whole life right here. Or two handlebar mustaches. For no, me. that's too. No, that's outrageous. Two right I'll take the Anthony Davis um, as my mustache. Good eyebrows. choice. Yeah. Good choice. We'll get to work on that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you right. for joining us. Pleasure. Derek. You know, get Pleasure. back out there. I might get, stop back in. Get back. You might pop in anytime. Pop in anytime. What a start! What a start! Vice President, right there. All right, everybody settle down, settle down, settle down. We're off to a good start. Oh. So, we've still got, what's the clock at, Tony? Give me a time. We up have there. two hours and two minutes. Two hours two and minutes, two minutes. Two minutes. Till extended bidding begins. So, for those who don't know, if you want to bid in extended bidding, you have to have your bid in now. And then at 10 p.m. Central Time, which is two hours and one minute away, I'm guessing now. Still two hours and two minutes. 30 minute countdown right. clock is going to begin. And. Every time a bid comes in while the clock has started, the 30 minute clock resets for that lot. But you gotta have your bids in first. So go in, check out, bounce around the auction, ha.com slash 50015. <laughs> wow. If you're interested. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're getting some bids on some, on, we're getting some bids on some of the newer cards I've been seeing now. And Patrick Mahomes. Oh, that's a good one. We're yeah. gonna talk about that one later. Um, well, he's Kansas so. City though, so that's Eastern. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. No, they're in Central. They're in Central. Are they Central? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's Central. We have a, uh, speaking of Kansas City, shout out to the rest of Heritage Auctions. We have a Frank Lloyd Wright designed house in Kansas City up for auction right now. I saw something about Up that. for auction right now. And speaking of that, you may not know, but Heritage has over 35 departments. We pretty much do anything. It's great to just... Go to our website, check out what's there, comics, timepieces, historical. We're selling the Neil Armstrong collection right now. There's an auction going on. It's like on our third installment, right isn't it? Or second installment this of it? The third installment, third installment, that's correct. You're on top of it right I there. did not look that up either. Uh, yesterday we sold a flight medallion of his for over $2 million. That's incredible. We went to the moon, Tony. Do you ever want to go to the moon when you no, were a kid? Not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I like to eat a Knievel. I mean, chips, that kind of thing, you know. Chips the show? Absolutely. Yeah, shout Loved out to it. Ponch. So, um, yeah, 35 different departments, and tonight we're going to give you a little taste of some of them. So, we're going to take a moment and kick it to one of our sponsors. Enjoy. Designed by Frank Lloyd Wright in 1939. Completed in 1940 with an addition in 1948, the Sondern Adler House is a masterpiece by the greatest architect of the 20th century. It features three bedrooms and three baths and 3,000 square feet of living space, perfectly connected to the nature around it. Aside from his great masterpieces such as the Guggenheim Museum in New York or Falling Water, Usonian houses are one of Frank Lloyd Wright's major contributions to 20th century architecture. Usonian homes were his vision for the America of the future, seeking unity between the architecture of the dwelling and the natural surroundings around it. The original design was 900 square feet, three boxes of living space. Frank Lloyd Wright referred to the home as a little gem. Not so little anymore, it's 3,000 square feet with three bedrooms and three baths. The 1948 edition tripled the size of the interior space and provided more elaborate outdoor spaces, such as greater terrace space in the back, additional carports at the entry, and the pond that sits behind me. The house sits quietly amongst trees and green with its neighbor, the Thomas Hart Benton House and Studio, just beyond the stone wall. The house is constructed of natural materials such as brick and tidewater cypress, the glass, both here in these walls of windows and in the Clara Story windows above brings the light in. Usonian homes, like many of Frank Lloyd Wright's residences, included a full vision of how one might live in the dwelling. They included many built-in pieces of furniture, and this house is no exception. Throughout the house are built-in cabinets, bookcases, and shelves, and included in the sale are the original Frank Lloyd Wright-designed dining tables 
and an original set of blueprints for the house. Walking into the home, one immediately recognizes both the small details, but also experiences the genius of Brent Wainwright, how the smallest details can impact the experience of being in the house. The clerestory windows provide a layer of light balancing the dark tones and the richness and depth of the tidewater cypress that encases the house. The windows and doors opening to the outside provide a light screen to the nature around the house. Even the smallest details, such as the way the screws are inset and turned along a horizontal plane, and the way that the brick is mortared in, layers of beauty that can be seen as one experiences and spends time in this home. The great room of the house shows all the genius of Frank Lloyd Wright. The natural surroundings spill into the room. You can see how the outdoor space and the construction of the building is integrated. This shows all the mastery of America's greatest architect. And we're back. Thank you for joining us, everyone out there. Just a reminder, only two hours left to get your bids in before extended bidding begins. We're going to keep going. Uh, there's plenty going on. It's a hive of activity. Security won't allow us to show you what's going on around me here, but uh, we are deep within the bowels of heritage auctions and surrounded by millions and millions of dollars of cards and collectibles. Um, it's a living, you know. Um, but very exciting time tonight, and we're gonna bring on another guest right now. Oh, I should mention, we talked about food quite a bit, so that inspired Tony to run off and get a snack. But luckily, we've got another fine mind in the hobby. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Pete Calderon. Pete, jump in here. I know, we have so many chairs now without Tony in here. <laughs> So you here? No, like wherever it. you want. Wherever you oh, want. Honey. The world's your oyster. Thanks for coming, Pete. Happy Thank to you have you. Thank you for having me. Uh, Pete sorry is I did not dress quite as nice as some people did. You did pretty good. You did pretty good. Uh, that's why we have Tony dressed the way he does, because then he makes all the guests look good. And uh, same with the, the content they're giving. Same thing. Exactly. So uh, Pete does a million things for Heritage. I think he works about 90 hours a week. Is that what we're averaging? Uh, if it's a slow week. Yeah. Okay. So uh, he lives here. He's got an, a cot set up. Uh, you know, I've told you you should go with a hammock. I know. Yeah. It's a lot more comfortable. But um, he takes in cards. A lot of you have probably talked to him at shows. He does those as well. Uh, he processes the card consignments that come in. He writes the cards. He wrote nearly everything in this auction, I'm going to say. A lot of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And he's a great expert. He really has a handle on some of the most obscure cards out there. I've never seen him surprised or say, I don't know what that is. He's always got some story, or I saw this back in the day, or when I was a kid, I used to have this. And he may be making it up, but he's very convincing. <laughs> so kudos for that. I'm uh, not that old. I still remember my childhood. <laughs> so... You wanted to start off with a very obscure card, too. So I'm going to pull this out for you. Another one uh, I had never seen before, yes. before this came in. What are we looking at here? Pete? This is our 1866 uh, pardon, card. Um, CDV. Um, extremely, extremely rare. This is the first one I've ever seen. Oh, wow. Uh, first one I've ever seen. Look at that. I did that huge buildup, and then, I know, bam, yeah. right but off the this, bat, you were stumped. This is this is what makes the job fun, though. I mean, this is just one of those things where it's all about the research because you've never seen it before. Uh, the team was a very obscure team that what was played, the team played, here? An, played an area called, uh, now we call it the Bronx. Okay. I'm not sure what it was called. Unfamiliar. Then. Yeah, and just to, it was so interesting because his, his nickname is The Old Woman. <laughs> and he, he was a pitcher and um, you know that was Derek's nickname for a long time yeah <laughs> I don't know if he's still carrying that maybe we should bring it back oh, yeah we didn't use old but <laughs> <laughs> there were other words <laughs> but uh, what's really cool is somewhere out there he, he is I should say he is a pitcher mm -hmm. and somewhere out there is his catcher who has the same card just like this and it's called the old man have you ever seen that one we have seen that one yes okay and this is the first time that See, the, I the told old, you people. old woman came out and they think his nickname came from the fact that, I guess, in, in France, ladies had red knitting caps. 
Their, their sure. knee caps were red. Well, the the team had red and white caps. <laughs> so I, I somewhere along the line, it, it it just sort of stuck. But I'm not up on my vintage French haberdashery. Yeah, headwear, exactly. But yeah. that's something I'm going to look into. <laughs> you inspired me. I like to think it was because the French uh, military uniforms also had red caps. So I kind that's of true. The beret butchered it, butchered it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just one of those things that just happened to be found. We also have a, a team card. Uh, that that he played on the the unions in Mar Marsala, I believe. Oh, do we? I believe we do. Yeah, yeah. and like we're gonna you didn't know that. pull that out right now. <laughs> this is it. I think I'm mispronouncing. Yeah, I'm sorry. We'll peek behind the curtain. <laughs> this is a tightly scripted show. Yeah. Every word you're seeing. We did weeks and weeks of rehearsal of this, and so far we're nailing the marks. So right, good work. Good. <laughs> Go ahead and throw this one up. That's that team card you were talking about. The 1866 yes. Grotkloss Studio Union of Morsana Team CDV. SGC authentic, and as you said, this is in now the, what we call the Bronx. Yes. So yes. A very, very short-lived cool. team. Um, this was the season right before their one World Championship season, so they were you know and but then again about four years later they would be defunct. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that happened a lot back then. Yes, team, exactly, teams would yeah. come and go, which is one of the reasons these are so hard to find. Yeah, but what's really cool is you have one of the Wright brothers on this team. Was George uh, Wright played for the team. George Wright played for them very briefly. If you're looking online, he's standing fourth from the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's really neat is the image is taken from a painting that hangs in the Baseball Hall of Fame library. Oh, really? Yes. Have you been in yes. that library? No, I was in the library. Have last you been in any line, library? The line was not in years. <laughs> have libraries? <laughs> Ask a millennial what the Dewey card system is. <laughs> See the confused look on their face. <laughs> But again, this is the first, uh, came to us from the first uh, same person who consigned uh, the other card. And what's really nice is they've obviously haven't been touched in over 100 years. They're in incredible condition. Um, you know, coming out in 1866, I mean, that's the year after the Civil War ended. Anything from that era is rare. Everything is, yeah, ab absolutely. And it's so it's so fascinating to find it, especially when it's, at, at this point, it's just a fluke that they still exist. Right. You know? And I'm a big fan of the facial hair from this era. Yep. So, and this still lovers <laughs> right yes. up there. You got the bib uniforms, you got all that. There's Absolutely, great yeah. vintage details. Um, if you've never looked into baseball from this era, you should, yes. first of all. And second of all, this may be a card you'd be interested in. How many of these are out there known? I believe there's just one other known. That's correct. I was testing you there. Yeah. I already knew the answer. <laughs> this is one of only two. So yeah. the height of rarity right there. And if uh, you're an elite level collector, this is something you're going to need. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And bidding right now, I think it's $20,500. Oh, uh, plenty of room to I go. think we got estimated at twenty five, but uh, I got a feeling there's a 19th century fan that's going to jump in there. <laughs> jump in there, yes. <laughs> got any questions out there? Yeah, we do. Larry on Facebook asked Hi, a little bit ago, so they are the original Bronx Bombers? Oh, good point, <laughs> good Larry. Point, yeah. yeah, definitely they are. Take that, Yankees! Exactly. <laughs> Can we steal that moniker away from them? I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. jump out there with that. They have a little power. Uh, the Yankees. I don't know if it officially counts because technically it wasn't the Bronx, but yeah, they were the original Bronx Bombers. But next time we get one of these, we'll put that in the description. Yeah. <laughs> and then Chris on Facebook is wondering: buy or sell Joey Gallo items right now? Ooh, and we're in Dallas, for those that didn't know, so we're right up there. I'm saying buy. I would think right now would be a good buying market, yeah. He, the Rangers batting coach, has really tapped in with him, and he mm -hmm. has changed a lot. He's a different player this season, and I think it's only going to continue. Who knows what the Rangers are going to end up doing, but he's had a fantastic season. Yes. He's still going strong. So what I think a he's going to. He, yeah, what a difference a year makes. I think he's going to continue. I'm saying bye. I, I would think so too because I think he, he can. He's got so much potential. I think it's, it's going to be. And these young stars, market, yeah. um, you know, he's not a flash in the pan. He's been in the league a few years. He's earned his stripes. I think he's going to continue. So there you go. We're giving good advice right now. And speaking of good advice, here's something you should look into if you don't own one, <laughs> and most of you do not. I'm sure I don't either. <laughs> yeah, the this is one of the greatest. Promotions early 20th century. This is a beautiful the W600 Sporting Life cabinet card. Uh, issued starting in 1902 and through through 1911. 
Uh, there's four different types of card mounts. Um, this particular one is one of the earliest ones, and it features Hall of Famer uh, Ed Delahanty. Yeah, and he's an interesting one. Yeah, and this card came out right around 1902, 1903, which is the year that he passed away. That's right. Um, he's one of the more fascinating early baseball characters. Great player, great talent. Unfortunately, had his in inner demons. And don't we all? <laughs> yeah, Stay we, off we train track do. bridges. Yes, if you're going to drink, don't <laughs> ride trains. That's just uh, solid advice that's lasted for over a you century. You wouldn't think you'd have to explain that to people. Well, but, some people uh, you do. I, you can't. You wouldn't believe how many times I've told Tony that. So <laughs> some people just don't listen. Yeah, sadly he was uh, kicked off a train and tried to cross a bridge over Ni near Niagara Falls and unfortunately fell to his death. Uh, ending his career, but uh, he is now immortalized in baseball history. It's a and very famous story and part of a great folklore of baseball. Absolutely, yeah, and this is probably one of his, his best card collectibles, because I mean, he appeared in very very few cards, but uh, this is probably one of, one of his finest card collectibles out there. It's great condition, um, still reasonably priced, I believe. It's still 8000 last time I looked. And tough like to so. come by. Absolutely, yeah. And while we're talking about him, I'll go ahead and mention coming up in our Platinum Auction, we have an award pitcher. That belong yes. to him in mm -hmm. there. I was looking at that earlier this week. That sale is going to be launching tomorrow, so another great rarity. There's a few, only a few of those cards out there, but there's yep. only one of these pictures. Right. So mm -hmm. if you're an Adelahanty fan, that's something you should look into as well. And while we're talking about the W600s, how can I not pull this guy out? Of course. <laughs> We've already talked about him a couple times, but... That Great. is the Honus <laughs> Wagner, and that's the street clothes variety. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you know that uh, Honus Wagner was so street and a lot of street cred? Yeah, a lot of street cred. And yeah, is that what is that what you wear in the, when you're on, out in the street? Especially on the corner in front of the tobacco <laughs> shops. <laughs> a buttoned up suit. This is a great portrait of him and legendary card. Uh, PSA has graded just six of these versions, mm -hmm. so incredibly rare, of course. And this is the less common of the two types, the right. other being the uniform type. But, you know, I was talking about this uh, with a friend the other day, Honus Wagner, one of the greatest players in history, but not many people bring him up when you're talking about the greatest players. True. But he was right up there, <coughs> perhaps overshadowed by Cobb in his day. They were the two luminaries of the dead ball era. Uh, they only met the one time in the World Series. But... You know, his collectibles and cards, of course, are incredibly popular. Oh, of course, yeah, and obviously because of the T206 card, which we do have one coming up in our... We do, that's going to be in September, September. David Hall collection, yes. And uh, you can come see it at our booth at the National, mm -hmm. booth 824. Come check it out. If you've never seen one, you need to, so at least stop by. Yes. But a beautiful card here. We're thinking 140 to 150000 for this one. I believe that's what we're hoping for, yeah, and it's well on its way. It is. <laughs> and while we're talking about Honus Wagner, I might as well mention in that Platinum Auction, we have a Honus Wagner Game Used Bat, bat yes. in there, which, wow. It's supposed to be one of the finest ones known, something like that. It's tough I mean, to come to work every day. Oh, know, I know, yeah. Year. Yeah, it's really, really difficult. You know, you're walking around the office, and <laughs> you knock into a Honus <laughs> Wagner bag, and... You kick over a Ty Cobb card, you know, those are the hazards. <laughs> it's the finest known. It's very cool to see. And this is one of the rarest cards in the hobby right here. And, you know, the oversized condition, or the oversized made it difficult to stay in good condition. This one's a four. So very nice condition for something like this. And it right. presents beautifully. So check it out. This is closing tonight as well. Yeah, when you had cards like that, you know, kids put those on display in their room, so they put the little pinholes through it and stick <laughs> holes. You Spoken find a lot like of somebody who's done holes. that before. Yeah, well, I did the decals, and I paid the price when Mom found out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got there, Pete? Um, this next card is a gentleman that we, one of the greatest baseball hitters ever, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Uh, this is his E90 Type 1 American Caramel card. And what I loved about this one is this one is brand new. <laughs> Completely unknown, new to the hobby, newly discovered. Um, fresh, fresh, as we fresh say. card, absolutely, yeah. You know, Grady has his condition issues, but uh, greater to 1.5, but it's a good looking card. It's got great color. Uh, the little little red spot, which is supposed to be his lips, is oftentimes a little mustache. Well, this right. one's nicely registered. <laughs> <laughs> and I love his pose in this yeah, one. His, his pose leaning on the bat, which is perfect for him. And a lot of the images you see of him are. You know, almost pained expressions, or but here he's he's just kicking it. Mm -hmm. He's just well, relaxing. This was very the earliest years of his career, and uh, there's a uh, among the caramel cards a Ty Cobb card where he's also leaning on his bat. That's right. And there's another one where Cobb is batting. 
So the theory is, you know, did Cobb and Jackson want to be, you know, looking the same way or copying each other? So <laughs> who you, copied who? Well, yeah, exactly, who was copying who? But yeah, we'll I mean, Tony look Cobb into that Jackson. little research project. <laughs> Get Tony on it. Yeah, That's so if you very want one cool of the hobby's newest Joe Jackson cards. Here it is. And this is one of my favorites that I had never seen until I started working at Heritage, and I saw that it was in the sale, so I had to talk about it. This is the 1909 E92 Dockman and Sons Christy Mathewson, and this is a PSA 8 Pete yes. mm -hmm. Pop One None Higher, yes. and that's just a great portrait of him right there. Some vibrant colors, and uh, the Dockman Sunset. Very yes. obscure or very rare set, and this, of course, is one of the most desirable in that issue. This is absolutely, he is one of the most desirables. There is a Ty Cobb in this set, which is not known as a Doc, and is incredibly hard to find. But what makes this card so special? Obviously, the condition. If you're not impressed by the condition, yeah. forget it. We can't, we can't. Then why are you, you watching this? Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's just such a beautiful card. I mean, all the colors, all the. It fine, all comes, the all comes together. It all comes together. Great design. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so 1,400 Dockman and Sons cards have been graded by PSA. 1.5% rate this high or yep. higher. 1.5% people, so get it while you can. Well, you, I mean, if you think about it, these cards were sold to kids. Right. Kids put cards in their pockets. You know, I have kids. Sticky and fingers. They're and not <laughs> great at keeping things in good condition. Good condition exactly. In fact, the opposite. <laughs> so... Play with your cards, but don't touch the corners. All yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the finest Mathewson example in a PSA holder. Yes. You're not going to find yes. one finer out there. So if you're the type of person who looks for that in your collection to have the best of the best, the top, this one's for you right here. Yes, it is. And, oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, it's all planned out right there. <laughs> 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 this is an E98. Still don't know who, who paid for them, but the, no, there's no advertising on the E98 Christy Mathewson. Um, this is just a card that has taken on such a special significance with, within the candy card collectors because it's a lot harder to find than right. the other E98s. Um, the pose is his classic pitching motion. Yeah, it's Just a great one where you're, you're staring that. him down. You're staring basically. him down. Yeah, you know a what the position batter no saw. batter wanted to be in. <laughs> this is the last thing the batter saw before the ball passed. <laughs> <laughs> it was all in one quick movement. Yeah, and it's it's just such a good clean card, and it's what what's unique about it is um, the lettering on it is different from every other card in the set. Oh, really? They use condensed lettering probably to fit his name. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It is long. Because if they use the other lettering, I, the, the team would probably be somewhere off on the, on the right here. <laughs> but, and it's just There's one not of much real cards. estate on there. Exactly. And it's, it's a uh, great condition. They're, these are usually found, and you know, Matthewson was so popular during his time, and kids loved him, adults loved him. He was you know, called it the gentleman ball player. Right. And he went to college yeah. and served in the military. You can't see, but we've got a painting of painting him right of... here, <laughs> yeah. hanging right next to us. Uh, <laughs> him and his young wife, he's in his military uniform. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and I love the green on this one. It's almost like yes. a spotlight is behind him. It's a, just a cool design. Yeah, it's a nice, Oh, clean, there we nice go. We got design. it. We got it. Oh, there's, there you go. There's the Matthewson <laughs> portrait with his wife. And that was a personally owned portrait. I remember right that. There. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. All right, back to the cards. Let's talk cards. <laughs> and, if you, and if you don't like the green, there is blue, uh, orange, and red versions out there. Yeah, too, the E ninety eights give you give you the, the variety. Green is nice because it glows. It's, it's it's got a nice you know serene feeling. Do we have any of the, those other variations in this sale? Not in Madison, but yes. So there's a lot of E ninety eight cards. So there's a really you go. nice Ty Cobb card with a blue back. Uh, more black swamp cards. A lot of high grade ones. So yeah, now if you're an E ninety eight fan, there's some nice cards in this auction for you. Nice. See, he just knows all that stuff right off the top of the head. <laughs> And Pete likes the obscure, so I pulled this one out so we could talk about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the 1887 in 175 Watch Burnham. I'd never heard of this guy until I looked into this card. He was a manager and an umpire. He got the name Watch because he pulled out his watch when he kicked King Kelly out of a game and said he had one minute to get off the field. And what did King Kelly do? Destroyed the watch. Now, the watch, right before the game... Kelly's team president had presented it to Burnham as an award. <laughs> Kelly was not paying attention, did not see that happen, and he was known as Watch ever since then. But 
So this is his only only pose in the series, of course. Yes. A, an obscure card, but very cool, and I love his look. I mentioned the my mm -hmm. the appeal of the facial hair for me. Plus, <laughs> he's got the derby hat on, so this is just great vintage imagery from that era, and a very cool card. Something if you're looking for something interesting to add to your collection, it's got that great story we just mentioned, and not many people are gonna know that. So you can <laughs> wow them with that. People are gonna say, "Who is this guy?" But he looks the part. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's got a great background plus it's a gypsy queen yeah now his, his old judge card is you, you can find it out there gypsy queens are so much more harder to find they're so, just sort of a second advertising name came out and at the a same great time. advertising great name. advertising great design the you know the dome top over the portraits and everything it re really is a great set and wanted to add this to my collection so thank you for letting everybody know it's <laughs> <up>. <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> you guys enjoy you should definitely take a no, look I'm, I'm just kidding uh, yeah this you is can go to our card. website ha.com if you're not already watching there we've got enlargeable images and you should check it out he yes. is fine looking fellow it's a it's a great looking card nice condition it does have one at one crease sure but other than that i mean it's it's in great condition and we do also have a pud galvin from this set oh really in the auction so we got two gypsy queens this time but uh yeah this one this is the first time we've sold this one but yeah it's, it's just a great and what's nice is you know the photo quality is so strong right and a lot it of times is. these cards are faded it's got great contrast you know, 120 years old you know right <laughs> we, should all, we should all have strong contrast <laughs> <on 120. laughs> here's hoping according to the face aging app i will not so <laughs> spoiler alert all right, another great one. This I tried is, the a face good aging choice. app. They said, no, you're not going to leave that off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it's a predictor, too. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, this is an awesome card. Probably one of the most famous baseball postcards. Uh, as you had mentioned before, this is uh, Honus Wagner and Ty Cobb, and this is when they met in the 1909 World Series. Very cool image of yes. them together. Yes. it's uh, There is a sporting news supplement that's out there, but for postcards, this is... This is it. Um, no matter what condition this card, we can offer this card. It's always a great seller. It's always very popular. Um, the two, both players are are in the you know in the same series with their individual cards, but this one is just taking on a life of its own. Everybody loves this, and it's it's the meeting of two titans. Yeah, and yeah. you know Wagner looks like he is very amiable. He's leaning into it's, it. Yeah, it's very a very pleasant smiling scene and we can only wonder how long that lasted, but Right. Probably not long. Cobb's very seems almost hesitant. Uh -huh. Like Wagner's reaching into it like, "Come here, mm -hmm. Georgia Peach." Well, you know, w Wagner wasn't the tallest man, but he was very stocky and very strong. So I I'm sure he wasn't an imposing uh imposing sight. But very cool, uh rare, of yeah. course. Yeah. What one of my favorite Pretty much everything we're doing here. Yeah. All right, so it's another rarity. I mean, we're going to say rare a lot tonight, oh, so yeah. just get used to <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, if you want to turn it into a drinking game, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> yes, do, do not use. That's certain, what most of the crowd's doing right now. Do so not use certain ahead. words with the Heritage Catalog as a drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the 1922 E137 Z-Nut, and that's Jim Thorpe Yes, right there. And I love the portrait on this one. It is so cool. And this is him with the uh, Portland Beavers mm -hmm. of the PCL League, and it would be his last year in organized baseball. Jim Thorpe, one of those guys, needs no introduction. He did it all. Uh, the first famous, at least, multi-sports star. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, football, baseball, of course. He probably would have dominated in basketball. You probably. Know, had, had he had the <laughs> opportunity, I would have loved to see him out there. And this is just a really cool card. This is unless it's true that white men can't jump. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> I've found it to be true in my personal <laughs> experience. So, but just a very cool portrait. And this is pop two. In my experience, white men can't shoot either. <laughs> <laughs> so only two of these have been graded yes. by PSA, and these, we got this one. These are Zena cards that came out. Pro and oddly enough, Zena is one of the most prolific producers of cards. Right. First set was in 1911. Last ones were in the mid 30s. Uh, only Pacific nice Coast run. leagues. All minor league teams. A lot of little peppered players in there at the beginning of their careers, at the end of their careers. A lot of Hall of Famers, the Wainer brothers, Vance. Um, Jim Thorpe is probably one of the one of the more popular cards in the, in the entire run. And harder to uh, come like by. Like I said, very hard to come by. Uh, and they had the coupon attachment yeah, on this? Yeah, these cards had a coupon that you could cut off. So most of them are cut off. Right. Out of all the Xenuts known. That's just people being frugal Z out there. Exactly. You know, Xenut experts say, the pro one of the best Xenut experts says that probably 2 to 3% of the known Xenut cards still have a coupon. Wow. So if you had this with a coupon, it would be even better. But this it doesn't matter in this case. I mean, Thorpe is one of the players that he wants. 
Um, and like you said, he's one of the most famous 20th century athletes. You know, sadly, they considered, you know, playing or minor league baseball <laughs> ruins your amateur status. <laughs> yeah, cost them a uh, Co- gold cost medal. Them a little, yeah, but I mean, I don't think anybody, and nobody cares about that. I mean, they recognize his, uh, his talents. And we do have a really interesting set of postcards. Oh, uh, yes. One of them is Jim Thorpe uh, in this auction. So if you're a Thorpe fan, there's those. A 50, really nice 55 tops in mint condition of Jim Thorpe. That's right. So he is nice, nicely represented, and this is just one of his most famous cards. And yeah, again, this is one of those cards where your collection, add it to your collection, and you immediately go to that elite you show status, off. and you show it off. That's and, right. Absolutely. You, nobody on your block is going to have this. No. So no, no, no. nobody at your card shop. Uh, you can jump on the message board, start bragging. Mm-hmm. Very important part of collecting <laughs> is of the course. bragging. The whole point is. So here's another one you can brag about. <laughs> oh, if you win re- tonight. <laughs> This is probably one of the most interesting, one of the more interesting baseball cards. Um, it's Uncle Sam, essentially. <laughs> Year, no years better way before. to say it. Is yeah. this is Uncle Sam's rookie card? It is. It's Uncle okay. Sam's rookie card, issued years uh, prior to you know Uncle Sam is obviously that iconic image from World War II. Uh, this card's from ni- 1910. Um, part of a part of the deal where you could get an album to fit that fit all the cards right and it's believed that this card was only available with with the album and oh, really? it's got a special place in the album it's got special wording on the back and just an just an incredibly interesting card and now this entire series is tough to come by but th- this card for very very few of them out there and it, it's just it's just a fascinating thing because you you know like I said, it's Uncle Sam. <laughs> and this guy was born to play that right, role. Right, exactly. He was born to play that role because I believe the posters were inspired by the face of the artist. Right. But this guy looks just like him. So he, kinda, he lucked out. <laughs> he lucked out. You exactly. know, and a good patriot, I'm sure. So he just yep. hopped right into that role. Yep. But this is another one I've never seen it before. before. Most people have not, yeah. Because the, this particular set, again, all minor league players. Right. And not just minor leagues, but like obscure southern leagues. And all the leagues where you've never heard of these guys. <laughs> if it was not for these sets, they would, unfortunately, they would just be completely overlooked and forgotten about. Because right. you've never heard of these guys. Most of them never played Major League Baseball. But here and there, there's, there's, a, there's a popular name in there. And We're this keeping their memory alive. Guys. So you're exactly. welcome, guys. Mm-hmm. Obscure minor leaguers <laughs> toiled away. So their moms aren't their only fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just keep going here. We got... What's up next? Oh, yeah. Here we go. You know, I'll unpack it for you. You give it a little intro there. Oh, okay. This, um, one of the more beautiful sets ever produced. Uh, this is a T227 Parade of Champions. Um, the parade is because they are representatives of multiple sports. Uh, of, the, of the 24 cards in the set, uh, there's four baseball players. Um, obviously, you know, Ty Cobb is included. He's obviously the, the most. There's all prominent. kinds of sports in here. Yes. Uh, boxers. Uh, Jack Johnson is the mo- most famous boxer that's in this set. Yeah, there's uh, the Jack Johnson. Here's right Jack there. Johnson. Be- again, a beautiful card. That's and an that, awesome that's what one. this whole set is known for is just the beautiful artwork, beautiful colors. Um, you know, see the multiple sports. You got the uh, horse racing here. There's horse racers, golfers. This Ralph Mulford is fantastic. Driver. <laughs> very, very rare subject in this set. Uh, Abe a- a- Tell is in this set, who was the gambler. <clears throat> Excuse me. Top one for me right here is Alfred De Oro. Oh, yeah. One of the the billiards. And wow, that mustache is striking. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about this facial hair. No, I, it's, the reason I got into the hobby, really, is uh, vintage mustachery. <laughs> mustaches and beards. And it, it, this set's got it in spades. Well, what, you know what? Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> <laughs> you got to call it water, folks. But really um, interesting set. Yeah, it's a beautiful set, beautifully produced. Um, this one, I believe, is 17 cards out of the 24. That's right. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, this time, Ty Cobb is not included. <laughs> But um, uh, that just gives you the opportunity to pick out your favorite example and add it to the set. And, and that Jack Johnson one, yeah. one is a standout. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's probably, again, probably one of the most beautiful cards of him that, that has ever been produced. And speaking of beautiful cards, and oh. Ty Cobb, Uh-oh. we're just going to roll right into this one right here, <laughs> which is the 1927 E126 Series of 60, quote, Ty Unquote, Cobb. (laughs) (laughs) 
Pete's. What can you tell me about that, Pete? The reason why I picked this one is I'm kind of a sentimental sucker. Oh, I know that about. And you. I know every you know everybody loves the rookie card. Everybody loves the first card that came out of a player. You know, all fresh young faces, and um, it's just you know, just just something everybody you know can can you know uh, appeal to. This um, card represents the end of an era. Um, okay. Early caramel cards started at the same time as tobacco, 1909. This set is from uh, 1927, and it is one of the last caramel sets ever produced. Uh, very rare set, uh, was not included as part of the first editions of the American Card Catalog. 60 card set, you know, issued during a historic season. You got Ty Cobb right at the end of his career. Babe Ruth at the height of his popularity, right. hitting 60 home runs. Uh, very fragile cards, fragile paper. Usually found in in you know poor poor condition, but just a fascinating set because it's so hard to find. And like I said, it's, it it represents the end of an era. You know, it's one of the last candy candy Good choice. sets. And yeah, I, I just think it's something interesting. And you know, every like I said, everybody loves a rookie. I I like the last cards of players. I think there's just something fascinating about them. You see the. The history on their face, the experiences on their face. The age. The age, the, the, the long night outs <laughs> drinking. Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> I know that's what put it on mine. So. Exactly, yeah. Also the aforementioned children. Oh, I know Go that. I mean, I'm only 26 now. <laughs> <laughs> so this, and it, it's a great picture of Cobb, too. And like I said, it's the end of his career, the end of the Caramel series. And as an e-card fan, it's just sort of a sentimental favorite of mine. So thank you for indulging me. You're welcome. <laughs> Now I've got a, a set here, and uh, well, it's a graded collection, but oh, yeah. this one that caught my eye, I uh, remember we talked about it when it came in. Mm -hmm. This is the 1950s Scott's Potato Chip Minneapolis Lakers PSA graded collection, and A, I love potato chips. We all do. And B, this is just a great design here. It's got the um, drawn portraits. And I love this going in for the slam dunk, which I don't think was happening a lot in the 1950s. <laughs> Probably not, <no. laughs> But, uh, so the Lakers were three seasons old when the set came out. They went 44-16 and 16 the season before and won the title. Say, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, do you know what the name of the league was at that time? The name of the league? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, you got me there. It's the Basketball Association. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so still the association. Mr. Showoff, what I was doing next to him. <laughs> very cool set, and it's got the very recognizable yes. po pose of Mikan. He's got the glasses on. Uh, you've got Hall of Famer jo Coach Kudla there. And it's just a really interesting set uh, that I wasn't real familiar with. And it's got Mike in it, which I liked, and I love that he wore his glasses while he played. So, and for for the basketball collector, this is probably about as obscure as it gets. Absolutely, um, really early set. Again, Mike in was just early in his career. Yeah, sec second year, I believe. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good thing he's in this set because if he wasn't, <laughs> nobody would be, have any idea. It would be who lost these guys to time. Were. But because of the Mike in card, it's it's one of the most uh, desirable card basketball cards and. They're, you know, they're, they're interesting, they're, you know, they're fun, you know, like you said, potato chips, everybody loves potato chips, sure. finding and these in good condition. I was just going to say, you're eating potato chips, mm -hmm. you know your fingers are going to get greasy, you're flipping through the cards, but these are very nice condition, and yeah, I love the portraits of and them on there. chips are so popular, we have an IT guy named after them. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I chip. Literally, <laughs> Literally named, named for them. them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I felt I had to share that one. Go over my secret stash over here. Oh, someone has a stash now. See, you hold it's not on potato us. chips, unfortunately. <laughs> but it is food related. So there you I go. I had a Wilson Franks. <laughs> the, the famous floating hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually one of the more fun sets to collect. Uh, 1954. Um, the, the 54 top sets, one of the classic sets in the hobby. This one kind of followed the same format with the you know, large full full color picture of, uh, of the hot players. Dogs. Of, oh right, the player then, too. Got it. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then instead of a second pose, we have a picture of hot dogs just sort of floating, <laughs> floating in midair. But it's, that's it's just what good advertising. Exactly. Yeah. So I again a very limited set. Um, there's actually a you know, packaged with meat. So. Packaged with meat, so you can just imagine the condition of some of these cards, and they did not fare very well. Um, but there are some high grade ones out there. And another odd thing about this set is the way they were cut. They were, they're almost always off center, mm -hmm. they're, or, they're, or they're miscut. So I think the con 
production was. They were probably fast. thinking these are going in a box with hot dogs. Hot dogs, dogs. yeah. So don't, who don't, cares? don't worry about accuracy. But uh, Bob Feller is one of the uh, top Hall of Famers in the set, and Roy Campanelli is in the set. Very famous Ted Williams card from the set. Yes. And for '54 fans, um, you know, if, for for the obscure one, for fans of the obscure, this is it, and you get a beautiful card. It's a beautifully produced set. Nice. Another beautiful card here. If you'll throw that up. Oh. This is the 1968 Milton Bradley Tops Nolan Ryan. And that's a PSA 9 yes. for that mm -hmm. one. So outstanding. The Milton Bradley, of course, uh, more scarce than the rare oh, variety. Yeah, yeah produced uh, for, for a game. Um, luckily, it was 68, and Ryan was one of the cards that they, they picked because... Um, he went on to have an all right career. Yeah, he did okay for himself. <laughs> Still sitting on top of the mountaintop for, I feel, feel for strikeouts, and I think he's going right. to spend eternity there. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't get you know invited to Robin Ventura's house for Christmas anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> and I feel bad for Jerry Kuzman fans because it's going to cost you a fortune to get his rookie card. Right. <laughs> <laughs> In a good grade, especially. Yeah. But you, you very rarely see the Milton Bradley cards, and they're very close to the, you know the actual tops cards. Uh, the coloring on the back is, is, is the dead giveaway. The yellow. The, the yellowing, yeah. And you know, obviously, this is the the key card in the set, and to find one in mint condition is so hard. Yeah, you know, precise so hard. centering, nice crisp portrait. Mm -hmm. He's got a weird look on his face mm -hmm. in there, but he does look focused. Oh, right. He always had that that serious look determination. I love to watch him play, but I don't think I'd want to hang out with him. You know, is what I always <laughs> thought looking at this card. But Nolan, if you're watching, give me a call. I'll yeah. give it a try. Uh, it's a good one to follow up the Wilson Franks because uh, he has a hot dog company as well. He Nolan. does, yeah, and they're good too. Yeah, I've quali had them. high quality good, product. Yeah, mint condition hot dogs. Mm -hmm. There we go. Moving right along. Oh Maybe. yeah, I love this card. Love this card. 1940 play ball. Uh, Ted Williams, and it's autographed. Wow. And it's not only is it autographed, which is great, but it's you know the. the Spot is perfect. Nice, huge signature. He did it right. Nice and clean. He did it right. You know, he could have written over his face or something. <laughs> <laughs> but right along the bottom, um, you know, a classic set that had both uh, contemporary and players of the past. It was issued uh, right after Baseball Centennial. And it, what I love about the card is, is the autograph. I mean, it's it's a great card. It's a good portrait of Ted. And then they have such a nice, clean signature in the almost a perfect spot. You, you can't ask for more than that. How often have you seen this card signed, too? Signed? Not very often, no. Right. No, I mean, back then, you know, you didn't have kids walking to go into baseball games with cards and exactly. getting them signed. And, and usually you know, when they you do see a signed card, the autograph is pretty low quality. Right, right. It's usually, they're usually low quality. Ted Williams wasn't the greatest autograph source. Uh, but a great well, pilot. Say. Yeah, great pilot, great ball player. But yeah, not, not a big autograph, uh, <laughs> autograph fan. <laughs> But uh, whoever got this card, I mean, certainly caught him at a good moment because, I mean, it's a, it's just a, one of the perfect situation and just a beautiful card and probably a, a certainly undervalued in my opinion, but I believe the bidding was around $1,000 or something like that, and I think it's w worth every penny. Yeah. All right. We haven't done much of this so far tonight, no, but, no. yeah, hockey card. How about that? Couldn't have seen that coming. <laughs> uh, so this is the 58 Tops Bobby Hull, and this is a near mint to mint eight yes and a beautiful example i love the tv border mm -hmm. on these and the game's going on behind him what's he doing i know right yeah <laughs> <laughs> so there's only eight at this level with just two higher so a great opportunity right here uh famously this issue has the centering issues but yeah. not none here none here it's a millimeter from perfection i measured that myself did you really so you can take that to the bank but uh when Great a man one. in tuxedo tells you something's true. <laughs> yeah, you better believe it. You better believe it. But uh, this is one of my favorites, definitely from hockey, just because it looks like they caught him unawares, as, as if he wasn't posing for this, but he's just kind of like, get it over with, I'm ready to get back on the ice, and you can see the game's going on behind me, mm -hmm. so I need to get back out there. And he just happened to grow up to being one of the greatest hockey players ever. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, there, there's that, too. <laughs> <laughs> but had to pull that one out. There we go. And boom. Oh. Mm -hmm. the perfect hockey one-two punch. Yep, absolutely. Great Bobby Hall and team from Chicago. Yeah, this is a, you picked a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the Golden Jet. The Golden Jets. And yes. this is a very tough card. Yes. So um, 
you know, I just had to bring it out, show people we don't do a lot of a lot of hockey. We do, yeah. It's it's you know, it's growing in the, it's growing in popularity in the states. Hockey collecting has become very popular, especially with the baseball guys who have their collections. Right. They're still looking to collect. Hockey is a perfect answer because they they date back just as far back as baseball did. The com, you know the production values are there. This card, I mean, this is his rookie card. Right. Um, the last card of the set, Golden it's Jet. Small set, only sixty six cards. Boyish good looks. Mm -hmm. He was famous for the right there hair, on display. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and just uh, again, one of those cards that almost every time you find it, it's always off center. Right. Uh, or this one, obviously. <laughs> So, something happened. They actually centered this one. This is a beautiful <laughs> it was example. a mistake in the factory. Yeah, exactly. Every now and then they screwed up and cut one properly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to mention this one because it's Chicago. Card, we're yeah. going to be in mm -hmm. Chicago for the National. And also we're going to have a preview at our Chicago office. We have mm -hmm. a Chicago office on Ohio Avenue there. And the 27th, 28th, and 29th, we're going to have a preview there. And if you come by, you're going to get a free ticket to the National. So come see us. Really? So I don't have to pay this year? I know you're still paying. This is for not employees only. Sorry, Pete. But hope to see you there. Hope you can afford it. But come by and see us. You can take a look at some of the great highlights, and it won't have quite the crowds of the Nationals, so you can take a good look at everything. But, yeah, Chicago legend right there. Absolutely. And another legend and another fantastic portrait right here. Oh, yes. <laughs> So tell the people what we're looking at. Don't this is don't just stare in awe. <laughs> great Jack Johnson. Another another one of my favorite cards because I'm a Jack Johnson fan. This is his 1921 exhibit card. Uh, these were the first now, exhibit cards date back to the early early days of the 20th century. 1921 was their first boxing set. Um, this is probably one of the more famous of the. They were produced through the 60s, but this is probably the most famous one. Absolutely. Uh, a great card of Jack Johnson. There's a lot of great photo postcards out there. We do have a, ironically enough, we have a couple in the auction. <laughs> <laughs> but another great pose like that. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. cards where um, it's coming right at you. Yeah. And two, two rare ones. This time, of this fists. Famous fight. And th this card, um, if I remember correctly, is pop one with just one higher. Wow. Um, there, I mean, the, the card stock they used was not the greatest, so it's and uh, so oversized is, too. Oversized came out of arcade machines, um, and just just one of his classic cards, classic pose, and you know, ever since the you know documentary came out, his his following has just grown and grown, and and if you just look at the video of him and his fighting, it's, it's almost funny sometimes because right. his opponents are just it like wasn't funny for the around. the opponent. It was. <laughs> Often pretty, pretty a beating, fun to watch, a complete yeah. beating, <laughs> but yeah, a legendary figure, and that's a great card. I, as yes. I said, I loved how it's laid out, and he's just staring you down. Mm -hmm. Makes me feel a little intimidated. Can you imagine walking into a boxing ring with this gentleman looking. I at I couldn't you. imagine walking into a boxing ring against anyone, <laughs> much less one of the greatest champions <laughs> yeah, of all exactly, time. Yeah. But <laughs> yes, that's going to keep me up at night. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, and, and it's a fascinating life he had. I mean, every, you know the what he had to endure and a lot of injustice know, a lot of, oh absolutely yeah and just uh but you know he kept going kept, kept going he kept a pretty kept good attitude pretty, about right it. yeah had, had a great attitude about it did not let it get i'm sure it's something because he pretty much could have internet. decimated anyone oh absolutely right <laughs> at any yeah. point you know, you know so. he, he had a lot he had a lot of poise obviously, obviously must have had a lot of confidence and you know, just one of the great boxers of the, of, of all time and you know it, it's nice that he's getting recognized absolutely I'm glad you're getting recognized too, Pete. Oh, gee, thanks. Yeah, all this <laughs> knowledge you're spilling out here. And let's keep going because we got a crazy <clears throat> item right here. Uh-oh. Yeah, and I've got to unwrap it like a Christmas present. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. Extremely rare. It says right there in the title. Yes. Not only extremely rare. I, I was tempted to put the change it to near impossible. <laughs> I thought maybe someone would accuse me of hype. But yeah, I could then explain or to hyperbole. them how wrong they were. <laughs> this is a 1949 Bowman baseball unopened wax pack. Um, you got a bunch a of these pack. in your collection? Oh, yeah, just sitting all around my apartment. <laughs> um, just near impossible to find. Um, when we had it authenticated, uh, we were told it was only the second one. Steve Hart had ever seen. Well, he's um, seen it all. Yeah, exactly, and, and he has seen it all. Uh, found in a collection of two cigar boxes with a bunch of other unopened packs right. uh, from the same era. Roughly, Everything I saw was like roughly 48 through 52. These came out in 49. Uh, there were, just the one baseball pack was in the collection, and there's one boxing pack. 
Um, and just not, and not only is it great that they, it was one, it's an open pack, but it's a five cent pack. Right. So you've got you know multiple cards in there. The expensive we, one. We could we could look through the papers. So we <laughs> could tell it was a forty nine pack. We can even tell tell who who it was. And this is just uh, impossible. I mean, you know, they're 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 Steve Hart could not one hundred percent you know give it give it his blessing. Um, just because but, but he never sees them. Never seen them. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, any little inconsistency, you know, you want to err on the side of caution, which which, which is fine. But I mean, there was considering the origin of where where these came from, the condition it's in, the state that it's in. Um, you know, we feel comfortable offering it. Steve Hart said he was comfortable offering it, and I probably shouldn't say this, but I asked him. I said, "Gut instinct is it good or bad?" And he said, "It's good." <laughs> nice. <laughs> but that's the know, inside information yes. you're getting right here yes. at Heritage Auctions Live. But exactly what show. Steve Hart said is in the description. So if you have any concerns or anything, just just read the description. But it's just an incredible piece, and you know, and like I said, unopened packs from this year were virtually unknown until there was that find of a couple of years ago. Right. Um, but that find did not have any forty nine packs. Right. So this is this uh, is your opportunity your, right now. One, Take it one while you can. Opportunity, yeah. All right, and I'm gonna stick with the uh, unopened material here. And I saw this one in our vault, which is where we are right now, actually. <laughs> and it literally jumped off the shelf at me. This is the 1972 Topps 3rd Series wax box. And I love the graphics on this one. It just says 70s to oh, me. Oh, yeah. 72 and was the, the disco set. <laughs> yeah, and it is very cool. Um, it's near mint box right there, so it's in great condition. But if you wanted to open it up, would you open it up, Pete? Oh man, that would be so tempting. <laughs> <laughs> but you got a. If, if I had the means and it wasn't gonna like you know, break my bank, <laughs> yeah, I would open it up. <laughs> so you got Tommy John, Dave Concepcion, Jim Palmer, Gaylord Perry, Hank Aaron, Roberto Clemente, Luis Apricio, and uh, the Red Sox and Mets team cards in there. So a lot of potential if you want to crack it open. Absolutely. But yeah. I say, look at it. It's beautiful. It's blazing. It's stunning. You need to just keep it right yeah. as it is. Yeah. But uh, that's about a $10,000 box Probably, right there. Yeah. And what's cool, we also have an Opichi box. That's right. right here. That's right. So yeah. we've got some great wax material you can check out. Uh, that's tonight and Saturday night as well. Mm -hmm. There's some yeah. more in there. We have a question from Chris. Asking, Hi, Chris. What's the is this best... our boss, Chris? No, not your boss. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> asking, what could, uh, what's the best or favorite card in each of your collection? What do you got? That's a tough choice. Wow, for that's you. a tough choice. Yeah, favorite card, individual card. Wow. Um, probably my E ninety four Cy Young cards. Okay. There, it was one of the last cards of him ever um, produced. Again, some sentimental fan. Um, with E ninety fours, there's seven different colors, color backgrounds available. I have six of the seven. I've never seen the seventh one, wow. the orange one. So. Uh, that's probably uh, one of my favorite uh, accomplishments. I'm gonna have and to go. And we even have one in this auction. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice uh, one with a deep purple violet back. I'm going to go 91 Donruss Todd Van Poppel. I think that's still going to come around. <laughs> uh, I've been sitting on that for a while. And if you remember back in the day, people said it was going to be a huge moneymaker, and I still think it's going to be there. No, my favorite is the uh, 66 Marvel Spider Man. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I love that set. <laughs> yeah, it's a great set. We're going to talk about it later. Don't you worry. <laughs> but I'm um, a big Spider Man fan. And when I started working at Heritage, I found one of those, and it has a place of honor at my house. <laughs> Nobody saw that answer coming. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, so another great unopened item here. And there you go, oh, Pete. Yes. Yeah, Here very it is. cool. Here is this pack. Came from you were the just same talking about it. 49 Bowman pack. It yep. smells like a cigar same box. Collection. Yeah, <laughs> one of those <laughs> classic cigar box finds. Um, again, um, Steve Hart said it was only the second one he'd ever seen. Again, five cent pack. Uh, 1948 Leave Boxing. Um, wow! You know, again, all the great boxers are in that set. You know, Jack Johnson and Dempsey and Joe Lewis and uh, Marciano, and it's, it's again, it's a classic set. Yeah, and what's the super Just rare see, one uh, in there? Marciano, Marciano yeah. right? Yeah, that yeah, there's only a handful even known. Mm -hmm. Could be in there. Could might be in the pack. Who knows? Could be yeah. in there. Just, again. Um, didn't give it his, you know, 100% blessing just because he'd never seen one. And, you know, again, wise man, erred on the side of caution, can't blame yeah, him. That's why but, he's the best. Um, well, yeah. It's, you know, it's, Shout he's, out to Steve Hart. He's probably exactly, watching. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. He's great great to work with. Uh, and, again, an almost near impossible pack. 
Uh, this whole collection had very little sports. The baseball and the boxing packs, I believe, are the only sports sets. That's and the in graphics there. on this one are the awesome. The graphics are beautiful. The, the, the knockout, layout, the, knockout mm -hmm. punch right there. Um, Larry has a question about a card y'all were talking about earlier. I think it was the Ty Cobb Honus Wagner card. Okay. And he noticed that Honus had an A on it instead of an O. Is that an error? Did it? Let's pull it out. I got it right here. A on it. It's just a embarrassment of riches sitting right here. I got to <laughs> all these cards. It's a tough job, people. It's a oh, tough job. another Ty Cobb right, card. Give me, one, give me one second. I'll find it. There it is. There it is. Let's take a closer look. Larry's got a good eye. Uh, hey, Larry, how you doing? We talk a lot on social media. So, oh, it is. H-O-N-A-S, it this says. This is what our fans are for. Yeah. <laughs> Putting our uh, catalogers to shame. Oh, wow. I'm going to say. Yeah, thank you, Larry. I've so, never noticed that. You knew they weren't going to misspell Ty Cobb's name, because there would be repercussions <laughs> be, exactly. if you misspell Ty Cobb's name. Though there are cards with his name spelled with just one B, so it, it has <laughs> happened. Oh, yeah, hone it, yeah. Wow, never noticed Very that. good eye. Uh, Larry, we're going to have to send you something out. I'm going to find something special to send you out. Not this card. You're going to have to win <laughs> this card. Like you know I mean? Yeah, <laughs> job application. Um, we have talked about that yeah, on social media suggestion. before. <laughs> just... Uh, Get a box and pack your stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> but good eye, nice little detail on there, and always good to take another look at uh, this card. I can't, I can't see it enough. Because it's on sun cards, they call him Hans. That's true. So, uh, but yeah, I've never. But that was that his name. Oh, you're right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, Pete, thanks for stopping oh, by. Thank you for having uh, me. A wealth of knowledge, as always. Put it's it's an education, <laughs> and Pete's gonna come back later. As we mentioned, we have. The David Hall T206 collection, which is closing tomorrow night. And Pete is also an expert in T206 cards. Seen a so lot. we're very excited <clears throat> about the David Hall collection, and we're going to talk about that later tonight and give it its due, which it certainly deserves, the most comprehensive collection of the monster you're ever going to mm -hmm. find. And it's being sold uh, all as one set. Or are we breaking it up? That would be fun. One yeah. 5,000 card box. <laughs> <laughs> An $8 million set. No, we're breaking it up individually. So if you collect T206 cards, it's an inc a great opportunity for you. He's got the rarest, the most obscure, the one of ones, every variety. It's just unbelievable. And we're, Pete's going to come back and we're going to talk about that later. Mm -hmm. But before you leave, Pete, I got a quick hypothetical for you here. Oh, no. <clears throat> so, would you rather have to follow John Daly's diet exactly as he does. When he eats or drinks something, you have to eat or drink the exact same thing in the same amount at the exact same time. Or Skip Bayless follows you around everywhere and does a running commentary on your entire life. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's an easy um, choice here. Easy choices. <laughs> but I, I would feel bad for Skip Bayless because my life would probably put him to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's an interesting. Uh, I would. Pro you know what? I probably want to go with John Daly because having somebody following you around, yeah, everywhere, that's 24 an added seven, factor. I mean, there's going to be some moments in there that you just don't want to talk about, you know. So, no, uh, <laughs> no, right. good choice. I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with Daly. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Pete. Thank you for having me. And as we talked about earlier, we're gonna delve into one of the other departments at Heritage. Are you a gun enthusiast, Pete? I have my moments. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. It depends on the tension. Exactly. So if you are, we have a great arms and armor department, and we also have an incredible natural history department, and they come together right here in this word from our sponsor.
copyright guns. How about that? Can you believe that? And they work. <laughs> Yours might, I don't know if mine Unbelievable, might. unbelievable. So very cool item. That's in our uh, natural history department, but also a little assist from Jason Watson in our arms and armor <laughs> department. I know he's watching, having a butt ice, I'm sure. Oh, the so, beer of choice. How's the night going for you? Excellent, excellent. Anytime you get to hear Pete Kellner on talk vintage he's cars. He's unbelievable. He is, he? and I do a lot of shows with him, and anytime something like that comes, it comes up to the table, he knows just like that, and he is Although really we stumped good. him. On this one, I said he'd seen everything, but one of the cards, the old woman, he said he'd never seen it before. Wow. Right after I made that claim. He's just about 100%. <laughs> He's close. So you were just feasting. Oh, it's right here. Anyway, sorry. I had two pounds of... Our staff uh, had me covered, and I was just not paying attention. But, any uh, food there, Mike? No, and you've been feasting this whole time, I I'm have. sure. So, I'm ready for a nap. I don't all know. right, so... You can take a nap if you want, but you got to nod off on camera. That's that's how this works. We'll see. So we're going to bring in another great card mind right here. He does and everything. dapperly dressed. He's, Unfortunately, yeah. his shoes will not be on camera. We may have to give them a shot. I but want you to ask him how many pairs of shoes he owns. You can ask him right now because here he comes, ladies oh. and gentlemen, Mr. Nick Sparrow. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, have a seat. Have a seat. I'm going to grab, grab your, me. Thank you for I'm gonna having me. I'm going to grab your material right here. Tony, talk to the man. We were just talking about how many pairs of shoes you have. <laughs> and this is astounding to me. My wife will say too many. <laughs> <laughs> I say not enough. Not right? enough. Right. Yeah. Uh, he but he has wears style. A, a, different, a different pair of shoes every day, pretty much. Try to, try to. And the vintage clothing, he's got an excellent collection of vintage clothing, too. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having how's, me. How's the show looking out there? It's looking pretty good. It's a <laughs> the bidding's looking pretty good, too. Yeah, it's the a hive good. of activity. As we mentioned, we are in the sports department. We're in the vault right here. Just outside this wall is our office area. And you can call us if you'd like, if you want to talk to somebody that's been on camera and tell them maybe they needed some more makeup or the hair team should have done a better job. We'd love to hear that, too. You can comment on Facebook or YouTube if you're watching it there. And let's get into some cards right away. Unless we, do we have a question we out do. there? We do. Roger from YouTube. Hi, Roger. Is asking, do we do single rookie cards or star cards from the 70s? We do. Yeah, we, we do. We got the expert right here. It's yeah. going to depend on the grade, the condition of them, of course. We have several thousand cards. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's going to depend on the on the condition. If he wants to give us a call and send us an email with pictures, that'll that's normally the easiest way to get a hold of us. And we do free appraisals if you're here in Dallas, or we have satellite offices in Beverly Hills, Chicago, New York City, uh, Palm Beach. That's in the U.S. I can go further. London, Hong Keep going. Kong, Amsterdam. Uh, we're all over the world. It's a global company. Although I've never gotten to go to one of those. Uh, foreign yeah, offices I think there. we need to go out there. Yeah, let's do an appraisal fair yeah. out there. I hope we have this card for Nick to... I hope he's going to talk about this one. Well, first... Is it in there? He's going to talk about this okay. one. Okay. We have an order, I'm sorry. Off. Yeah. So here we have uh, one of the most popular uh, modern cards, the 1993 SP <laughs> Derek Jeter rookie card. <laughs> looks uh, like he was going to have a good future. Yeah. I, this, this card has definitely picked up over the last years just based off... Uh, Jeter retiring, and now, you know, uh, I think next year, right? Next year is... I think he is, goes in next year, yeah. Yeah, he goes in next if year. If he makes it, guys. Let's yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is he going to go in as a player or, or as an owner? <laughs> or is that, or I don't think he's going in as an owner. I don't think you want to mention that. <laughs> yeah, right sorry. We have a Marlins fan here. One of the true Marlins fans. I'm sorry. Oh, this is some real-time content right here. It's not my cell phone, I promise. Are you sure it's not your cell phone? That is your ringtone. Just annoying <laughs> buzzer. Nope. I think it's, it's the a fire alarm, alarm oh, going okay. off right no. there. No. Talk to the people. I'm going to take care of this over here. Mike Provenzale. All right. So back to the card. Back to Derek Jeter. Yeah, back to Derek Jeter. Uh, this card is uh, his most popular rookie card, and it's one of his most condition-sensitive rookie cards. Um, there's very few PSA 10s out there. Even okay. to get a hold of a PSA 9 um, is extremely tough, and the card values have pretty much skyrocketed uh, because of that. that so now, I mean, with with Jeter, you mentioned being condition sensitive. It's that lower what lower bottom corner. Uh, well, overall, or it's, all it, of it's the foil of the card. I all mean, the overall, foil. Okay. The surface is extremely tough. Uh, it's very susceptible to chipping throughout. So, you know, when, when a card easily chips, just, you know, 
these cards were handled ultimately. They're coming sure. straight out of sure. a, a pack. So any little thing, you know, it affects Could this card. The slightest also, imperfection. Yeah, and also over time, these these cards, if you kept them in a box, they stuck together. So and the foil That's a great stuck, point. On, stuck on the back of them. So um, wow, that also affected, uh, you know, the con the overall grades of the cards. That's why there's not that many, you know, in in high grade and and are, that are able to get that, you know, ten rating. Here we have a nine, which is still great. Um, the estimate on this card is is five thousand, which um, it continues just to to astonish in terms of what these cards are bringing. What do you think him going in the Hall of Fame is going to have? Like what kind of effect? Would, I mean, so would, would far, think so that? far, most. I mean, he was a sure bet. You know, mm -hmm. even you know, a few years ago. Even. Yeah, he was a sure bet to to go into the Hall of Fame. Most people have. You know, again, they're they're investing based off him getting inducted, but that's that was a given. Mm -hmm. But even that slight, you know, once it gets closer. All, all the time, the car, you'll see the card values increase at least 20, 30 percent, if not more. Really? It's, it's pretty crazy wow. um, once a guy actually does get inducted or is really close to that induction date. Nice. Speaking of which. Oh, hey. I can't wait to I hear read about your, this. I read one. your mind. How about sure, that? He read my mind. Here, pass me that Jeter over sure. there. I'll Maybe trade I'll you a Jeter hand for the trout. Is that? Hand it off to Magnus for Magnus. safekeeping. <laughs> Tell us about this one, Nick. So here we have a 2011 Bowman Sterling, Mike Trout, Red Refractor, one of one. Um, so this is a, a rookie is considered a Mike Trout rookie card. With baseball cards, it's a little bit different. You know, with modern baseball cards, uh, their rookie their rookies technically span a couple years just based off. Uh, a lot of these players are getting cards before they, they actually play in the major league. So. Right. So Mike Trout's first year that he had cards was 2009. So most guys are going to gravitate. You'll see in the next in in our next card. You know we we have a 2009 Bowman Chrome. That's a good Mike tease. Trout. Yeah, right there. that's so, a segue, isn't it? <laughs> this guy's so good. you know here we're not doing it in chronological order, but here we have a 2011, which is Mike Trout's rookie rookie year. This is rookie year playing. Yeah, but 09 was okay. correct. Okay. So so um, so these cards are labeled as as the rookie card. Um, it's from a premier product in Bowman Sterling. The Bowman products for baseball are, you know, are extremely, extremely popular. And when you have a card only limited to one, the potential is, is you know, out of this world. So that's why we're seeing the bidding where it's currently yeah, at. Yeah, just right going to ask that. I mean, right now, yeah, right update now, the people. Yeah, right now the, the, the bidding is currently at $57,500. Wow. So... Uh, our estimate on this was was twenty five thousand, and, and who then, estimated that? Yeah, uh, I did actually. So. <laughs> well, that's hard to do, though. I'm sure. I mean, that's a, <laughs> nice to throw me under the bus. Just saying, just saying. Oh, wow. you got anything else? Hey, it's, so, it's our to kick his dog or something. Jeez. <laughs> so, wow. so with these these modern card values, is it's extremely hard to price them because uh, for an example like this, you you don't really have a. a you know, a gauge on on where the price is going to go. And the market's really hot. So and, the, and the market's you extremely know, it could hot. change like that. Yeah, and for Mike Trout, most people are already. You know, he still has maybe ten years left in his career, and already people are saying he's a lock for the Hall of Fame. So, so a card like this, the in, the investability of a card like this is just extremely, extremely high. And like the uh, fifty two tops man, where he's looking off into the distance, like looking at his future. You got the same thing right here. For sure, <laughs> he's looking to catch a fly ball. <laughs> So <laughs> that's amazing. Again, though. it wouldn't surprise me if this con the the bidding continues because you know trout super collectors, guys that are very player specific, uh, will gravitate toward this card because they need their this card to complete what they call uh what they call a rainbow. So a rainbow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Trout. I get it. Yeah. So so a rainbow <laughs> for for a collector is oh. is all the variations from a given set. So. Wow. And, and this is the hardest one, I'm assuming. Yeah, this is, of course, the one of one the is one going one. to be the, the hardest one. There's a version numbered to five. There's probably a version numbered to ten and, tw and twenty or twenty-five. So those, that's how the rainbows kind of correspond, and they correspond based off the color. The color. And this is the most exclusive. Right this there. is yes. So this is you know a, a one of one. There's only one, and it's likely uh, once it sells, it's gone. You know, it may 
go into that collector's hands and never leave. Well, sure. that's why you're looking at that price. Yep. They may not get another opportunity, especially if people are putting together a collection. They may sit on it for a while, so you got to get it right now. So you can put your bids in at HA.com if you're interested in this. Well, no pressure, guys, but the Heritage Auctions president, Greg Rohan, is watching. Oh, and oh boy, Greg. <laughs> I was going to dress up, Greg, I promise. He uh -oh. commented in saying all sports department members should follow Mike's lead and be in black tie every day at Thank the you. office, befitting the importance of the icon <laughs> iconic masterpieces they're working with. As, as Greg knows, I wear a tuxedo every day. Not the same black one. I mix it up a little <laughs> bit. Um, but yeah, and... I think everyone should follow. So I'm going to I talk to Chris. I thought it was Casual Friday. Friday. Yeah, it's Today. Thursday. So, Oops. yeah, Thursday yeah. right there. So that means tomorrow I, I get to wear the same. I don't think Greg would approve of my, <laughs> of, of my Nike attire. <laughs> oh, but it's such good vintage clothing. It's such good vintage clothing. That brings back memories to me. So Greg works in our coin department. Uh, he's works? a coin expert. <laughs> he's yeah, an executive. Yeah, Yeah. He's... so he travels back and forth. But, uh, yeah, he wears a tuxedo every day, too. So I, I'm, it's an homage to him. And, Greg, thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Wow. Much appreciated. <laughs> and another classy individual right there. Sure. So as we mentioned, you know, earlier, this is the, the 2009. So this is technically his his true. We're going back in time. Yeah, we're going back, go in, back time, in time. So, oh. so this is his true uh, Kevin kind of his true rookie for, for a, right. a Bowman Chrome. So most collectors will gravitate toward this kind of. Uh, comparing it to, let's say the uh, fifty-two. Well, 51, you, fifty-one, fifty-two. Let, let, let's say, let's say it's the fifty-one, the fifty-one Bowman Mantle, because it's a true rookie. So I'm not going to compare it to quite the fifty-two. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you this: As a collector, do you see more guys want the 09 or the two thousand eleven? Does it matter? Or, uh, it, I know it's it like matters, it's a case by case yeah, problem. It Th this card in popularity triumphs every two thousand eleven sure. card okay. produced. Um, just because, you know, it, it's the first year of trial and it's the major product that everybody wants. So okay. for prospects, uh, Bowman Chrome is, is the pinnacle product. That's the one, okay. Yeah, that's the one where a guy that's currently in the minor leagues is, is a top prospect. Guys are gravitating toward buying the Bowman Chrome and once their Bowman Chrome card comes out, that's the card that they want. So guys are paying, you know, in some cases, let's say for... Um, for the top prospect, let's say Wander Franco currently, a superfractor of Wander Franco, a one of one superfractor auto, um, is probably a seventy-five thousand dollar card, wow. you know, seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars, wow. and this guy hasn't played one game in in the major league. <laughs> wow! Uh, you know when you're talking of one of one of this card, which it's out there, um, you know at the time that that it sold or so-called sold, which I think it did sell, it sold at that at that time for about three or four hundred thousand uh, dollars, which now the market has substantially changed and it could be, you know, potentially a you know a seven figure card for Wow. Yeah. So that's kind of you know, the market is 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 changing and it's gravitating toward the, the current players. People, and it could change quick, right? Yeah. I mean yeah. it could change so quick. It could change overnight, but it's it's this is, you know, it's the the modern card market's kind of to put it in a way, it's kind of like sports betting. You're betting on a current player. If you like that current player, you're getting a hard asset for you know what you're buying. So in in, in that way, you know a lot of people collect because they love it. A lot of people collect to invest in a player, um, and sometimes that investment does pay and off. Some people want to do something that they know is a solid thing, but like you said, some people want to gamble and take a big risk that you know it could turn into a seven-figure really card, even off. if you're putting yeah, it. In a, you, you never know. I mean, this card probably on release, you, you probably. In 2009, you could have had this card maybe for may, maybe 40 or $50. So when when you're talking the values where it's currently at, you know, it's crazy to think, you know, back. You know, it's crazy to think, hey, you know, maybe, I, maybe even somebody that opened the product and did, you know, kind of lost interest in the hobby could go back and, and find one. And find right. one. I mean... Oh, wow. the, the, they could have it just sitting there a in day a drawer. Ago, I better go look through my stuff. <laughs> a day ago, Tony That'll and I were actually, were actually picking up a consignment. and This is a great story. And and I was digging through a box. I've never seen this guy that excited. <laughs> I swear to God, his eyes got huge. And, I'm well, sorry. that's a different story that you're thinking of. <laughs> you, you never know what you're going to find, you know, in terms of the modern cards and the variations. You know, you dig through some boxes from years ago, you know, digging through a 2011 box. <gasps> that's and, right. We find a Mike Trout rookie refractor, which you know at the Whoa. time is maybe a two or three dollar card. He didn't even and, know what he had. Yeah, you don't even know what you have, and it's just sitting in a stack of just just cards. So similar to the vintage stuff, you know, it's like finding a fifty-two man or you know, <laughs> just sure. to be yeah. in there. That's that's a, that's unbelievable. 
Of course, the 52 commons and the high numbers, you know, are going to have a bit more value than most of the other cards in, in that box. But right. It's kind of like finding a needle in a haystack, and it's it's really fun, you know. I gotta, so, like we said, uh, the modern cards is a rapidly changing uh, market, and Nick is one of the finest minds in that industry. So, if you have questions, if you want an appraisal on your collection, definitely contact us. Nick would love to help you out. I got a question. Yeah, bring it. What is the impact going to be of, from Zion Williamson, do you think? Is it going to just take it to a whole different level on the basketball cards, do you no, think? I mean, I mean for, for modern basketball cards, the market has, you know, over over the course of the past three or four years, the market has changed. It's, it's one of the most investable sports. Very Guys healthy. are gravitating. There's mm -hmm. not that many players, so when you're talking 12 players a team, it's a very limited roster, so, you know, it's more specific. So the entry-level market on some of the high-end uh, basketball cards it's it's extremely it's a, it costs a lot of money to get in. Some guys that you've never heard of, right. their best cards could bring you know four or five hundred dollars. And when you're talking wow. that risk, you know, sure it could pay off big if they hit big, but sometimes you know that risk isn't you know really worth it. So, you, <laughs> but it's you know, fun, right? It, it, it's fun. It's you know if you collect, it's one of those one of those things. Hey, some guys just collect a specific team, so. They want their they want their players and like right. you know like Tony if he would have you know gone with his team and bought and collected cards and bought some Giannis <laughs> cards back in 2013 and 14. they were so bad Nick they were so bad <laughs> you know? I remember going one they won 15 games maybe one year and I remember getting a nice lower level ticket for like 20 bucks and I uh, I have a Giannis bobblehead that's heavily sun faded from, uh, <laughs> in my uh, window yeah if I'm, you're interested in bidding on tony's Giannis bobblehead uh, give us a call but yeah i mean those card that's values those card values for instance for Giannis, probably at the time of his rookie year he's not getting that many minutes and you know he's not a, he's a very, relatively unknown relatively unknown so you know guys are buying his cards for five his 10, name barely $15. fit on the card, <laughs> <laughs> and so, no one could pronounce it. Certainly, so at that and, point. and now that market is you know a hundred times what it was at. You know, even wow. even more than that in some cases. So. Can you give us the uh, pronunciation of his last name there, Tony? Antetokounmpo. Nice, nicely done. And now every have, time it comes up, you I don't have to ask see us him. Now. You, you know how many times? You know how many how many tries <laughs> it took him to learn? That? <laughs> right. This is all heavily he scripted right. and rehearsed. No, as we he, said. Nick is a hundred percent right <laughs> that, on that. <laughs> That was right. that was three years rehearsed for <laughs> the making right there, for that moment right there. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, let's keep going with another good modern card here. Sure. We have a 2013. We have a 2013 Bowman Chrome, um, Aaron Judge, uh, Green Refractor Auto. So. Um, this card again, it's 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 another prospect card. So, um, it's it's his pretty much the pinnacle. If you want an Aaron Judge card, you're going to gravitate toward toward this product right. again. New York, yeah, Slugger. We've yeah, spent I mean, a lot of time talking New York. I know. So, so this is actually you know is going to be a color variation. So that trout card again has multiple colors. Um, this one happens to be a green, which is uh, limited only to 99 examples uh, produced. So there's going to be different. Wow. There's going to be different colors. Again, the most rare is going to be the super fractor, um, and then you're going to have corresponding. Now there's so many colors now that you, you can't even keep track of. <laughs> is them there all. a chartreuse? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> a neon orange. How far are we going here? Uh, you're, you're you're going now. Now you're going every type of color shade you know <laughs> out there type. Uh, they definitely want to, you know, harp on on the variations and stuff in, in the current products. Um, and that's how they create the rarity, you yeah. know, for something that they could make eighty million if they wanted, but like what they did in the sure. in the early nineties right, when I was starting, when right? I was collecting. And the, and there's you. some there's some true collectors now that they'll only gravitate toward uh, the the colors that were around back then. So okay. so back on kind of when they started, uh, you know. Um, it, they started inputting variations into these products. Um, there was only a limited amount. There was like five different variations. There was a refractor, there was an X fractor, there was a super fractor, uh, there was a blue refractor, and that's pretty much about, oh, there was a red and an, and a, and an orange. So there's so, a sect of purists that just no, so there, those. Yeah, there's a sect to, you know, those those normally bring a premium just because those purists only will, will buy those colors because they think those colors are kind of 
that that was the inception that's kind of the inception of the variations and that's their extent um, but with the new wave of things again you know it's all about rarity so there's only 99 of these out there and there's you know i don't know how many there are in in nine five ten but you know again it's going to be a lot less than 99 so when you're talking there's only potentially only a handful of these um this is one of the best aaron judge cards that you could potentially get your hands on yeah nice all right i'm going to back us up Whoa. a little bit yeah I'm See, not, Nick, not Nick can do card anything card here. Expert. He can do memorabilia, yeah. and he can do cards, and he can do vintage cards. So I was throw this out. This is the 57 Tops Johnny Unitas, and it's a uh, PSA 8.5. And I love this one because of the pose. The, yeah. uh, he's about to just haul off and launch a bomb right there. To Raymond Berry, you think? <laughs> probably. 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 Raymond Berry. So 57 Tops, a great issue, too. You got the Horning Rookie. You got the Star Rookie in there, too. So and Unitas, yeah. Yeah, a lot of rookie power. And, uh, you know, he's got a huge grin on this one, too. And he just didn't seem like a guy that was, you know, You should joker. look up some of, some of the other, some of the other <laughs> cards are definitely a lot more serious. Yeah. <laughs> he's a little, a little more stoic in the other yeah. issues. But this one, he's a freewheeling rookie. He's about to haul off, throw a touchdown pass. Um, but, yeah, a vivid, bright example here. Definitely. And How's the centering, Nick? What would you say on that? I mean, really nice centering. The colors pop on it. You can see that white border just, sure. I mean, it really makes those colors pop. The colors on this one are are really good. Sometimes with this, you know, issue, you kind of see kind of some, some ghosting, and definitely the colors don't pop quite as much. Um, so, you know, it, it's definitely 57 tops has always been a popular issue, especially with the strong, you know, rookies, especially oh, yeah. when, you're, when you're talking so a lot of legends. Three, three of the premier quarterbacks, you know, of that mm -hmm. era, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, two of them happen to be, you know, Packers. So, you know, Tony's <laughs> keep going, Nick. I like this. I like where he's going. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's one of those cards that collectors will always gravitate toward, you know, anytime you're talking a, a hall of fame rookie card, um, Collectors are you can't always go wrong you, there. you can't go wrong there, especially with the quarterback. Quarterback again for football is going to be the most col collectible position. They it moves normally, the radar. It, it yeah. moves the radar. It moves the radar, and normally they have the longest shelf life in terms of any position. So um, those type of guys, you know, as, as a we'll, quality quarterback is going to make it into yeah. the Hall of Fame. You know, yeah. other positions as, as, it's a little as, more difficult. As we move forward in this, and in, in the next card that we have, you know, it's kind of going to going to be that similar trend. You know. Oh yeah. Should we look at yeah. that? Oh, oh nice. Here is it go. another quarterback? Oh, it, it sure is. is. So he doesn't play for the, any of the New York teams, though. Does that count? <laughs> yeah. so. He's wow. got a supermodel wife. We'll give him that. Yep. That's true. So uh, here we have a 2000 playoff contenders Tom Brady rookie ticket autograph, graded at BGS 8.5 with a 10 autograph. Again, you know this card. I mean, there's there's not much you could continue to say about this card in terms of you know where the market's gone on it um it's just such a popular card just based off you know brady being potentially the greatest of all time and he keeps going and so. he keeps going yeah to, to win super bowls if, at his age if it doesn't happen if he wins another super bowl you know his market which many thought was maxed out where it currently was which was extremely high just imagine him winning another super bowl and potentially this card going double or triple what it's currently at with the values the, the way they're, they're currently and he's going. not just dragging along i mean he's in the mvp conversation yeah. still he's every in year the, he's in the mvp conversation you know he's He's not the most mobile quarterback, but, you know, sure. again, they, they create, you know, the Belichick with his coaching style protects him and, and puts the right guys around him to make him succeed. He doesn't need the superstars. I was going to say, he, he doesn't have a lot of, I mean, he has talent, but not like most teams that have, you know, For sure. these great superstars. He kind of makes do with what he has. And, yeah. and he makes guys into, you know, but, yeah, again, that's a he good makes point. their careers. Yeah. Chris Burton on Facebook is saying that super collections of one player is the new thing. It, it, Nick, that is that is, that is true. It? Yeah, I mean, guys, if if guys like a certain player, they're gonna they're just gonna collect that one player. Is that so, how you're doing it, Chris? Sounds like you are. Uh, Vin Baker know. for me. What, what player? What are, you, what are we talking about? Vin here? Baker for me. <laughs> Baker. Wow, that's a name out of left I field. Love Vin Baker. Okay, All right, sorry. and speaking of MVP conversations, ooh, yeah, there we go. 
So right, moving again right along, you know, it's kind of like we, we went to Unitas, mm -hmm. we went to Brady, and now we're going with... Tightly scripted show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Every know, word rehearsed. With, 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 with Mahomes, it's, it's, it's also one of those markets that, you know, again, he didn't play as a rookie. So uh, this card, when it was released, I mean, there was people buying it, of course, and they were, they were high on the Some card. Tech fans. You know, certainly. tech fans, Chiefs fans were kind of like, okay, he's our future. Um, but um, it's also one of those things that it's a relative unknown because a guy that's never played an NFL snap during his rookie season, you're kind of like, okay, well, this guy's sitting. We're, we we may not see the guy. You know? you know, he didn't go to Alabama or Notre Dame or, you know, one of the big schools either. So, yeah. I mean, and he put up huge stats yeah, in college. He but... put up huge stats in college. He was known as like a gunslinger in college. So he just, he just chucked the ball up there and, you know, right. you, you kind of knew what to expect. Um, so even as a rookie, his card values were kind of, um, were kind of, you know, kind of high, but, um, but not, not really as high as they are right now. You know, with him winning the MVP, the card values, you know, went 10 or 20 times, you know, what was... What Probably a lot of Chiefs fans who, uh, had this just because, like you said, he's a future, and then bam, the first season. It's so hard to get a franchise quarterback, and they've got one now, and they have, they have weapons around them. I mean, he, he could be the next big thing for the next, what, 15, 10, 15 years the way guys are playing now. For sure. Um, so that, that's, that's what people do with the modern cards. They, they kind of gravitate toward a player like this. And, again, they're, they're going to try to, and they're going to try to, you know, try to decipher who's the next big thing. Right. Sometimes that doesn't always work. Sometimes <laughs> some guys, you know, will have maybe two or three good games and then they'll fizzle off. And that'll be the span of their market. Sometimes guys have, again, Mahomes is maybe a generational talent. So when you have a generational talent like that, guys want to invest in it because, you know, look at a, a Brady, for instance. If you if you invested in Brady early... Oh, or you'd be you're retired. Hurt, well, yeah, you could retire. You, you know. could have a supermodel girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people, that's their fandom now, not just collecting, is just the player, not the team. Mm -hmm. uh, especially like And in, the way guys switch teams now, too. In yeah, the NBA, and, it's and ridiculous. That's, and that's a huge yeah, thing. Yeah, and a lot of things is, is, you know, predicated on, like, let's say, fantasy football. Let's say a guy's on your fantasy football that's a good team. Pick. You know, it's, it's kind of like that in the collecting world. You know, you have them you know, in your collection, and that's kind of your little own fantasy football. Right. right. I take last every year, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, don't, I listen to my, that. don't listen to my I fantasy football that. advice. So speaking of a fantasy, a fantasy come true for Mavericks fans right here. In the draft. Sure. So we have, so here here in Dallas, we have our, our, our generational talent, exactly. or so-called generational talent uh, in, in Luka Dantich, um, which, you know, overall he's done amazing things, you know, his rookie season. So um, again, that's gonna that's gonna translate um, extremely, extremely well in terms of you know in terms of what it's selling for and in terms of twenty one boards, eight rebounds, six assists in the season. Not bad way to kick it off. Not right a bad there. way. Good person it to invest. It in. seems like it seems like he could do it. He he could do it all. So you know, guys are again gonna gonna pursue that. So his market. You know, some people say there's upside potential. Other people say, hey, it's way too high where it currently is. But, you know, I, I'd say it's extremely investable based off where the, the modern basketball market's kind of shifting. Uh, most guys gravitating toward, toward the modern market, um, they want a guy like this. They want a player that's going to Rookie be... Rookie of the year right there. Yeah, they, they want a guy that's going to be, let's say, like a Giannis, that every year is going to progress to potentially a, a, an MVP <laughs> I level. Totally say that. Yeah, I, I, I did. It was in the script. <laughs> but kidding. but they want a guy that that's gonna that that has that special gift, you know, sure. that could kind of do it all, and that can carry a team yeah. for years on end. Yeah. No, nobody nobody gonna... really knew that Giannis, you know, scoring, you know, eight points, eight points is rookie. Year, I didn't think he was. Know, I mean, he was. Could, Clumsy, yeah, it's very clumsy. But when you develop, You're like this guy's no Vin Baker. No, <laughs> why am I even watching him? Yeah, he, Tony's like Tony's like this guy's this guy's no Ray Allen. He doesn't know what a three point. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. He's no Eric Bledsoe, Tony. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. Oh. Um, so it's oh, been a while since the Mavericks have had a featured rookie card that people sure. are really so, after. So this is like, you know, what Dirk is to the Mavs, you know, is what Luka Doncic is to, you know, modern, you know, Mavs fans, kind of. So he's the future wave of, of, of everything. So guys are going to ri ride on those guys that are, you know, generational talents and they'll also make their franchise relevant. You know, maybe 
with one superstar, you know, one more superstar, the Mavs could be they potentially can... back in contention. Yep. You know, similar to kind of how the Bucks built built what they built. So, um, it, you know, again, it, a lot of the modern card market is predicated on the success of the potential. team as, yeah. as well and the potential that the player has. So, again, if you're scoring 21 points in your rookie season and doing it all on, on kind of both sides of the ball as well as, you know, getting rebounds and assists like he can... You know, you're 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 gonna you're gonna get a lot of people, you know, gravitating toward toward your cards. And so. fine looking autograph. Yeah. On there. Great, uh, great looking autograph. Most people, you know, if Mahomes, you've ever he's seen, got Mahomes beat, that's it, for sure. I, I think. <laughs> wow, <laughs> going out on a limb there, bro. I like my, it. My wife has a has a shoe box. I don't know if it's like a brand called like Lululemon or something, but most people said like <laughs> like he just copied that signature. Oh, his, wow. His signature just looks like brand tie-ins. Big deal. Yeah. Big deal. So. But, uh, Set it up. It, it's a great looking card, you know. People again, contenders for basketball isn't as popular as football, but it's still up there in terms of the products that are released every year and that people Something are going to gra gravitate toward. And people like this card specifically too. Uh, the card is in a sticker autograph, so it's an on-card autograph. So that that makes a huge difference to collectors as well. People, hmm. will, you know, collectors are going to gravitate toward. Those cards that have the on-card autograph, where he's actually signing he actually the card, held it, held yeah. that card. instead of a sticker where it's just he, he signs signed a, a sticker and then they and then they they, they stick it on there. So, nice. um, great card. You know, if you're looking for a nice Luka Doncic, this this might be the one for you. There it is. This guy's got some potential too. Sure, that's the one that just got bid on. So what's what's this? Oh app? yeah, what's the uh, it's what's the ten thousand dollars update? How long do we have till extended? Oh, bidding? Oh, sorry, yeah, thirty-two minutes. Thirty-two minutes until extended mm -hmm. bidding begins. So get your bids in at ten p.m. Central Time. You have to have a bid in to continue bidding and extended bidding. Nick, talk about this card. Three thousand estimate, ten thousand. So what's the story? So this is another one where you know uh, an, an estimate kind of blunders because you don't know where. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you don't, see, now you're calling. You didn't write that one. Somebody now, else now did. You're, now you're calling me out. See. Oh. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you did write it. Uh, Probenzil right. did that one. <laughs> so again, you know, with these rare Jordan inserts. So in terms of it, the modern card market is is different in a way because. It's a, a lot. A lot of it's predicated on on insert cards. So mm -hmm. you know, especially in the '90s era, where there there was so much volume of product being produced, the insert cards are w what collectors want to see because they're the most limited of the you know limited cards. In some cases, you could open two or three boxes of of a given year, and not and not see you know any any player of you of, know like of of this of, of this, this subset. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, 98, uh, 99 Fleer Tradition Jordan Playmakers. I've never seen this. Yes. So <laughs> never the reason you've this. never seen it is because there's only 50 examples out there. Okay. So, wow. Oh, sorry. Uh, Don't lead us astray. Yeah, 100. <laughs> Number 25, though. Sorry. That's... Yeah, look at this. This is live that learning is you're incredible. watching. At ha.com. And don't forget if you have questions this, or comments, this one please let that us one. know. Sorry. S sorry. This this is this Oh, is, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. You you jumped the gun there. Yeah, Tony. Totally. Oh, yeah. I got you got the lot number right here. You, Come you on. got the lot number right Don't be this confusing is, our guests. This is the, the Is that coming up? Yeah. I don't we may not have that one scheduled, but oh, okay. this is this is the ninety eight ninety nine metal universe. So th this one's numbered out of a hundred. Um, the estimate on this one's thirty thousand, but there's only fifty examples of this card out there. Wow. Um, the other oh, card, the other card that we mentioned, um, which is the Playmakers Theater card, uh, that example's limited to a hundred. Jordan collectors just love the rare insert cards. You know, when which they, there are a lot of which, Jordan collectors yes, out there. I mean, Jordan's again for basketball. That's the pinnacle guy. Everybody's going to gravitate toward a Jordan card, so they want the rarest of the rare cards. Um, you know, let, let's say, you know, in that era of basketball, when cards were being produced, let's say an 86 Fleer, the 86 Fleer was, wasn't a, a particularly popular product. Um, it didn't sell well, but there was still a lot of it out there. You know, there's still, you know, even then there's still a lot of it out there. There's still a lot of Jordan tens even in, in the current, you know, market. So they want something that they can't really get. And these are the cards that they can't really get. They don't see it every day. Sometimes 
Especially it, th in this grade. Yeah, especially in this grade. So sometimes this may be their only chance to attain this card. Meanwhile, they could potentially get, you know, a Jordan rookie way down the line. So these cards are, you know, offered maybe once or twice and then stashed away in a collection that, you know... You're not going to see it again. You're, so. ne you're not going to see it again, so... So if you need this card, now's the opportunity. Tonight's the night. Uh, Ha.com. 29 minutes. Yeah. 29 minutes yes. left. Clock is ticking. We have a question from Johnny on YouTube asking, he wants to know what would be the best cards to look for from the 70 and 80 years? 70s and 80s. Uh, what sport, I wonder? Are we doing everything? Think baseball. Maybe everything. Because he was asking about modern and vintage. So okay. Just... Okay. Sure. So, I mean, in, in the 70s, um, you're you're gonna have you know good rookies there you know in eighty you're gonna have Henderson in seventy five you're gonna have uh, George Brett and Tony's favorite all time favorite all time, <laughs> all, all time yeah. absolutely yeah. God Nick knows me well he does these guys uh, travel together we we do yeah. we just got back from a trip there. so again in in hockey you're you're gonna always gravitate towards seventy nine so you're gonna try to look for for Gretzky right um, you know again and those borders I mean you talk at seventy five baseball with those colorful borders and then Gretzky's rookie year sure. I mean they're hard they're, they're not easy to find I mean the, the question is so vast you know just because there, there's so many answers because mm -hmm. again you're going to gravitate toward those Hall of Fame rookie, Hall of Fame cards. rookie cards and again during that era you just have to look to the, the those players that were dominant of that era so um, that's kind of you know the answer it's one and we've got some great uh, unopened material from the 70s and in 80s, this auction yeah. in the 80s uh, for baseball and football um, so check that out and yeah. I don't mean. don't put it near Tony. He'll, he may open. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I tried to do it one time. I lasted one day and then I had to open them up. <laughs> and that's a true story. Maybe that's a, something we should post one time: is get an unopened pack and sit Tony. We in should have me, see, see you, and Nick open up a. Sure. That's not I'll a bad do that. idea. Are you yeah. buying? Maybe top. Silence. Hey, the eighty-six. It's the same tops. thing if you're out to dinner with Tony and you ask hey. him who's picking up the tag. <laughs> hey, I, what I, wallet? I, Nick Ricketts. I, I, to, Tony. Tony knows. I, I told this. I told this story to a consigner when, when we just we just came back from Atlanta, and I told the story to to a client. I said, I said, you know, normally I, I rent the car when we're when we're you know when when we travel, and you know Tony gets away with with leaving his wallet at the hotel room. So I get to sleep in the car yeah. while Nick drives. Yeah. I love it. This, this was the first time ever ever in in working at Heritage traveling with Tony that Tony drove. So you know, I, and I was in Nick's I'll town. I'll say too. this: driving with Tony is a nightmare. It was. Uh, I was in Nick's town though, and I th I thought you know, I'm like he's gonna <laughs> drive. I don't want to. You know she. Uh, I prayed every every time I got every time I got in that car. I, I, I had to pray a little bit, you know. Great directions up. All right, what do we got here? So we got you know one of uh, LeBron James's you know again one of his premier rookie cards, um, rookie autograph card. Um, so we have a 2003 SP signature LeBron uh, gold, which is limited to just 50 examples. Uh, this is a PSA 1010. Uh, meaning that both uh, that both the card uh, itself and the autograph uh, attained you know ten status, which is what collectors want to see. So of course, um, it's kind of a new thing. Well, not a new thing, but PSA you know over over the past uh, year or two has been really pushing uh, the dual grade service, so that you grade both the autograph and the card. So normally the ten tens are going to triumph everything else. Sure. Uh, because people want, you know, again, the perfect card. They want to see that perfect autograph, and they want to see that perfect card. Um, so and LeBron's smiling face yeah. right there. Look how so young he looks. Yeah, I know. God, okay. does he look He's young. a prince. So we went, we, went, <laughs> we went from having a, a, a Jordan card, which, you know, uh, is, is the most popular. I'd say LeBron is definitely the most, is, is, is second to, to, uh, to Jordan in terms of popularity and collectability. So when you're talking a card like this, it's it's no surprise where the, where the card and where the value stands on on a card like this, when you only have 50 examples and this is um, what's the population on this this one, um, this is the only example to attain 1010 status wow. of this card. So out of the 50 examples, this is you know potentially the ultimate example, the only example that could potentially get 1010 status. Um, so when you're talking something like that. That's why you're going to see these prices just continue to soar because, you know, sure bet, you know, sure bet Hall of Famer. That's not a question. Yeah. Um, I think he's got a chance. His his legacy. Pretty good chance. His, his legacy is is solidified already, and with the Lakers doing what they currently did, um, his investability is up right now. You know, it was down. You know, last year yeah. just because 
He's not in the playoffs. He's not really in the conversation. I mean, he misses the playoff one season, guys. Yeah, people Come are losing on. their mind. I know. They're jumping ship. I think we have to give Nick some credit on this one. He, he had a 20,000 estimate on, so he uh, he right redeemed on. himself quite right well, on. I would say. Yeah, it's 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 with the buyer's premium, it's, it's 5,000 above the estimate, you know. And <laughs> again, the, the, the guy's good. The, the, potential, the potential, you know, I, I wouldn't see... It going for you know thirty or forty thousand wouldn't you know shock me just because wow. a card like this doesn't come up very often. Right. You know, for LeBron collectors, these are kind of the pinnacle cards that you want to own and stash away, and potentially down the line, you know, five ten years from now, this could be a six figure card. Um, and that's the way the modern market has has turned. I mean, some of those Brady cards that we touched on earlier, some some of those cards, I mean, they went from being at the height of the market at the time was maybe five grand, and now some of those cards that were selling for five and ten thousand, you know, reaching fifty or a hundred thousand in some cases, you know. Um, so you you just never know where where the market's shifting. But um, guys, really, there's a lot there's a lot of new investors coming in, and these are the cards they're going to gravitate toward. They Absolutely. want they want these players. They want these cards. You know, if Tony Gizzi had a card, they'd probably want that. <laughs> yeah, right. I want that one. Oh yeah. man. All right, so I had to pull one out. I was thinking about what are we going to talk about with Nick. So this that's a 10. This is a 10. And players, what is it? Players have become celebs sure. oh, uh, these days. Nice. These guys like LeBron, he's on TV, he's in movies. These are the two biggest celebrities of the 60s right here. This sure. is the 1965 Swedish Candy, the Beatles with Cassius Clay. Jim, I never even knew they made that. Ten. Never. So, yeah, I'd never seen this one before, but you recognize that photo, right? That image. Yes. Uh, there's also vintage photography that has it from their meeting at Ali's training gym. But uh, this is a pop one of one right here. And, in fact, the next highest grade on this card is a six. Oh, wow. So this one's a wow. ten. There you go. So just a little rarity I wanted to pull out. Extremely uh, rare and two, I mean, who, who's not going to want Aldi and the Beatles? I know. The yeah, what a great combination that exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah, that is a great combination. So just pulled out a little vintage I for mean, you guys. I mean, Thanks, it's, Mike. It's, yeah, it's of course, poetry of on a course. card, I guess. Both of them are poets. Both of them are poets. Right. When I see something I've never seen before in the sale, we're going to talk about it on the show. Right. Regardless of if... Okay. That's going to happen. That was, this, is, this is a little bit different. We finally have some hockey on the show. There you go. So. Hey, we talked, He's uh, a hockey guy. We talked Bobby Orr earlier. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Definitely shifting it up. <laughs> We've done a few hockey yeah. cards. So we're, we're spanning all sports. Um, so uh, right here we have a 2005-06 uh, Upper Deck the Cup. Um, Alexander Ovechkin, so good timing uh, for him. Uh, rookie patch autograph. It's graded a 9.5. Uh, again, the, the, this this with with modern card collections, it has to do with the product. So um, the cup for hockey is the pinnacle product. It's the the product that everybody wants a card from. Right. So when there's a rookie, they're gonna they're gonna want it. You know, they're they're gonna want a card from the cup. Um, so in this specific year, 2005-06, you had probably one of the best rookie classes ever in Alexander Ovechkin and, and, and Sidney Crosby. And they've delivered, both and, of them. And they've delivered. So um, this card is, is is a rarity in, in this grade level. Again, the estimate's uh, 20000 on this one. Wow. Um, and, you know, again, for, for hockey collectors, these are the pinnacle cards. You're going to... For modern collectors, they're going to gravitate toward Crosby. They're going to gravitate toward Ovechkin. And then, you know, in, in that way, it's similar to, like, let's say, um, a Mahomes, comparing Brady and Mahomes type situation. For, for the younger guys, they're going to go, you know, McDavid. You know, McDavid's the next big thing. Or sure. Austin Matthews is the next big thing. So that's kind of the speculation. Once those, those generational talents come out, they're going to invest in, in those, and get the, in, in and those get type players. Cards. See, we give hockey its due. <laughs> and Tony, Nick, talk Nick, a little bit about Nick hockey, knows, Tony. Nick knows plenty <laughs> about golf, going too. To golf. So uh, had to make sure he got a yeah. chance to talk about this one. So, I mean, so this, this, is, this is the pinnacle for most golf guys. Um, so 2000 SP Authentic was and 2000 upper deck so that's so that's tigers that's tigers solidified rookie autograph okay. so his rookie card was was he's got was, a good looking autograph yeah. he always has yeah even from his early days even even if he's signed for fans right i mean he it, it's always been pretty good hasn't it his signature yeah i mean it, it, hard it, to get. his signature is extremely hard to get but it, it's really nice i mean it's completely legible you know he he always you know one had, of the finest in the modern yeah. era 
So this is the gold variation of this card. So there's only a hundred examples out there. So it's it's numbered out of a hundred, and it, this one's graded a ten. So I believe there was only there's only four examples uh, of of this card um, out there. I mean, for golf collectors, this is a card to have. Uh, Tiger will go down as either the greatest or you know right on par with yeah, the greatest. Yeah, one or two. For one, sure. one or two for sure. Um, Apologies to Sam Snead. Uh, yeah. I was thinking John Daly. <laughs> I thought you were going to say John Daly. No, I'm sorry. Um, so for, for golf guys, th this is a card. And his market was kind of down, you know, with all the drama that happened and, you know, everything. His career took a downturn. He got hurt, you know, all the all the bad publicity. You um, hit one fire hydrant. That's all it makes people. Seriously. So, one golf club goes <laughs> flying through your windshield and everything, everybody loses their so, mind. So, you know, once something like that happens again, it's going to affect your market. But him winning the, the, Masters. The, the Masters this year really helped his market. And, I mean, it made his market just go right back to where it and was. And there's a lot of people holding Tiger Woods stuff that when it was plummeting, they were waiting for an opportunity. I to told get people who would tell who would send us his stuff or, you know, inquire about his stuff, hold on to it. Once he wins another major, it'll go back up. How much would you say this has gone up in the last six months? Would I mean, at, at least 50 Oh, it went up that much? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I mean, okay. The, the card values were, were really down. And right when he won or when he was right in contention, you know, at the Masters, because most people, that's what they want to see. They want to see, yeah. you know, him right in, in the field. That'll take, Especially at that tournament. Yeah, yeah, that'll take a casual fan. I mean, somebody, and, and that would be me, a guy who, I'm not a diehard. You're dressed casually, so Thank yeah. You. yeah. <laughs> but, it, but I mean, anybody, you know, like for a guy like me, I'm watching it. If he's in contention on a Sunday... Yeah, and yeah. Mo most people are like, yeah. they're like, if Tiger Woods is 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 playing, that's what they want to see. see it. You know, they want to see the biggest name in in golf. You know, in potentially golf history. Sure. Uh, playing, so you know, and the comeback story and, too. And the comeback so story was good. great, and he won in pretty much dominant fashion. Yeah. And, you know, so um, you know, that put him right back, right back. You know, kind of right now. I don't think he's doing so hot. You know, in, in the British Open. Yeah, today he yeah. didn't do so great. But, but um, he can come back. But he can come back, people. and again. You you know he's only he's only you know I think three major victories away from from Jack right. from Jack wow. and uh, and just one just one victory away from from tying Sam, Sam Snead for the the all time uh, victories the all time yeah. victories. I'm glad you didn't say he's too old because I think he's right at my age. He is. Yes. <laughs> a lot of years left, Tiger. A lot of gray hairs left. <laughs> oh, man. You got a couple after uh, me driving you around, I, I think. I, yeah. do. Bit, Nick. I do. That's where all mine came from. <laughs> just one day, Tony took me to lunch, and it was just two minutes away. <laughs> we have another question from Larry asking, I guess, just your opinion, or does it affect value at all? Um, do you prefer a card autograph or a sticker autograph? An on card on card or on yeah on, on card for sure I think most people would agree on that um, again but it's going to vary on the product so some products you know are exclusively sticker autograph products and some players with all the contracts and stuff like that and all the time commitments they have sometimes the easiest thing to do is for them to sign the stickers um, so you know it, it depends but uh, a lot of the the higher end products. Um, they're going to have on card autographs, so you know you you pay for what you you, you get in the in the overall box. So sure, sure. Um, when once you're paying a premium, a lot of those uh, you know premium products are going to have you know really nice patch cards with nice on card autographs on there. All right. Well, Nick, thank you for joining no us. No problem. Always just a wealth of information. It's an education every time you come As on. I say, the guy knows everything. <laughs> and that, I mean, I'm serious. He does memorabilia. He would does your cards. wife agree with that statement? Uh, I don't think she would. She wouldn't? <laughs> no. Oh. But, but, oh, but, wow. But, but you should... You, 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 the only I, I'm person who, I, I'm definitely a step above Tony. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the oh, only guy who can uh, put up with me Before sometimes. you leave. Um, all right. <laughs> would you rather... Every time you receive an email, you're compelled to do LeBron's pregame chalk toss ritual. Every email you receive. <laughs> or, every time a tackle is made in the NFL, you are compelled to do the Ray Lewis dance. I mean, Oh, I know my answer. So man. Sundays would be busy, Monday, but you'd have an off-season there. But, uh, I mean, I, I know my answer. I, I'm, I'm a LeBron guy. I've always been a LeBron guy. <laughs> He's a Miami guy. I'm a Heat guy. I watched <laughs> yeah, him. okay. I, I watched him, you know... 
R raise he a got trophy. you titles. Yeah, Nick. he got me titles. I was there in the building once he raised that first trophy. So I, I will gladly do do the the, the chalk. The toss. chalk. Okay. All right. Can well, we thank you very much for joining get us? Get him some chalk. But, yeah. But I was thinking Ray Lewis need because you do. But but uh, but but, to but Tony, he'll he'll gladly do the Ray Lewis dance right we'll now. We'll have him maybe. do that some one yeah. time for sure. I need sure. more space. I have to get on top. <laughs> That'll be on next show. The table. <laughs> Nick, a pleasure as always. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you guys for having me. Of course. One legend there, and oh, our musical the, department has oh, wait, a collection wait. of a legend as well oh. right now, and a truly outstanding piece. Take a look. Whenever I have uh, collected anything that I felt was important to me, I hold it, I play it, I try, I look at it if it's an image, I try and soak up whatever it is that the image is giving to me which was the reason I collected it in the first place. And so, having done that, I, I, I've gotten all the juice out of these guitars. You know, I mean, look at them. There's an incredible part of musical history right here. And for me to be able to have, have held them and gotten the juice out of them that I wanted, I then wanted to share them with people. Because people, sh I mean, I'm getting older now. I'm 77 years old, uh, you know, how much longer can this go on? And so I wanted to uh, make them available to, to guitar collectors that truly care and love what it is that they may buy. And so that's why I'm sharing them. Dwayne Allman's slide guitar, Johnny Cash's first major guitar, Don Everly's guitar, Bo Diddley's guitar, Willie Nelson's guitar, Stephen Stills' Firebird and the 6120 Gretsch from Buffalo Springfield. What else? My guitar from Woodstock, the guitar, the electric guitars I played, all my, my Les Paul and my Black Les Paul and, and my, my Esquire and my Telecaster. Let me see. Wow. I am a lucky man. I think these are incredibly special because they were played by the founders of the business that I'm in right now. Early American rock and roll from, you know, the bus guitar that was passed around from Buddy Holly to the Everly Brothers on while they're touring around, you know, to Dwayne's guitar, to Johnny Cash's uh, 017 Martin. Um, why not? And I, I chose these specifically for my collection because they were played by the founders of rock and roll. The very first guitar I ever had was supposed to be a bicycle, <laughs> uh, but we couldn't afford one for my 13th birthday. And so uh, my second choice was a guitar. For the life of me, I can't remember the name of, of what the guitar was, but it was an incredibly cheap acoustic guitar. And it started me on my, uh, on my journey, which is ending up talking to you right now. And we're back. Thank you for joining us. H Tony, what's our time until extended bit? We have 11 minutes. 11 minutes, and we're here welcoming, already at the table, already Hobby ready to icon. go. Ready to go. Hobby icon <laughs> and witty mastermind, Mr. <laughs> Lee Iskowitz. Lee, welcome. That's overdoing. Thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs> me first, me first. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like Tony so what better. do you want to talk about? <laughs> the first card up that I wanted to talk about was a 1915 Cracker Jack Ty Cobb. It's graded a PSA 7. Um, this was picked up in a collection up in the Northeast area with a father-son who did collecting back in the 70s and 80s together. So these cards, a few of them that I'm going to be showing to you, were fresh off from the hobby. Wow. They've been put away for the past 30, 40 years and just seeing the light of day now. Um, the card that's graded a 7 is very conservatively graded. A well-centered example that you may never have the opportunity of buying again for this type of condition. And, and we've seen some crazy prices for Cobb Cracker Jacks this oh, year lately, already. Absolutely. And this should be no exception to the rule. And the other one that we picked up was a 33 Sport King Ty Cobb graded a 7.5. We still Oof. have no idea why this card didn't make that 8 grade. But it is a phenomenal white bordered card, great image, and 
I love the uh, on this one the uh, silhouettes at the bottom yes. of the game going on. <laughs> and man, look at the yellow on that. It is bright. What year is that? 1933. Okay. I mean, they had these cards stored away. Big year for great away. cards. Yep, they had them put away. Didn't see the light of day until. So these are fresh to the hobby. Very right fresh here. to the hobby. Um, that's something that some collectors just love, is they want to have the fresh to the hobby. Nobody's owned it before. Um, and there you go. And two, two legendary cop cards as well. Correct. So they didn't know what they were sitting on? They just called you and... They called us and uh, my, uh, I should say, the, the goat. <laughs> wow. That's Went uh, up there. you know, Derek, Derek Grady. Grady's nickname is the goat. Um, it's because of the odor. So, uh, <laughs> oh my good. He's a great guy. He's a great guy, other than that. Uh, two vintage cards wow. I pulled out just because I love the design. These are the 33 tattoo orbits right here. And uh, you got Dizzy Dean, and then the key to the set, Connie Mack, right there. And very obscure brand, but uh, there's just something appealing about this to me. Um, Very appealing. And Dizzy Dean looks so disinterested. <laughs> Every photo you see of Dizzy I Dean, mean, he's got a smile on his face usually, though. Uh, Connie Mack looks disinterested, too, but that's how he, <laughs> always, that's al how he always looks. Like, he's looking down at someone. But, uh, <laughs> he's scolding. So we've got some great Tattoo Orbits cards in this auction that are still going. If you like that set, you should check it out. And these are two of the finest ones right here. And we're going to keep moving along. We want to get you guys to hear about these while you still have a chance to, to bid the on them. Before we go to extended bid. There you go. Oh, no, wait. Actually, we've got a set first for you. Which is... Wow. Hold oh, on. Let me pull it out. What you have here is a collection of New York Giants from 1948 to 1957. Prior to the year, them moving to San Francisco. Included in it are two Willie Mays rookie cards, his 51 Bowman and his 52 Tops card. Here's the 51 Bowman. This was just a collector who was a huge New York Giants fan and then moved south but kept his collection with him until now. These are a great example of, if you're a Giants fan, tremendous collection to have. It's pretty much individuals of everybody, and it's loaded with Willie Mays cards. And like we were talking about with Nick, there's different ways to collect. Some collect just the player, and here you've got just the team. Just the team. And they've done the work for you if you're a Giants fan. Right a ready-made collection. <laughs> they certainly have. As we like to say in the, in the hobby. <laughs> Look at that. Here, All right. Yep. Look, you are flying through these. I'm impressed. What's the next one we got up there, Mike? <laughs> Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, this is all on skip, you, buddy. Skip over that one right there. <laughs> yeah, he it. does look disinterested. <laughs> what, about, what about Maris here? <laughs> I'll give you that, Mike. Connie Max, like, just move along. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> there you go. Roger Maris. Uh, you want to talk 57? about this guy? 57? Was this on me? It was. It was. Well, we here we have Roger Maris's rookie card from 1958, graded a PSA 9. None one higher. That, one that you do not see very often. Um, usually cards like this are, usually you'll see like this, like haze or ghosting to it. This card just has perfect registration. There's no print. One that, if you are a Maris collector, Yankee collector, or rookie collector, this is one that you should definitely have in your collection. Nicely done. God, is we he got, efficient? We got five minutes here to get your bids in before extended bidding, so five minutes left. Anything you want to bid on an extended bidding, you have to bid right now. So, I mean, don't even look at what they are. Just throw bids in on random cards, and you're going to end up with something good. It's an outstanding catalog and a great bid. sale. I like it. <laughs> so here we go with the 1951 Bowman Mickey Mantle card. This card came directly out of the same collection that the two Ty Cobbs that we talked about previously. Um, it is a phenomenal card, centered extremely well. Uh, border stark white. Mantle's stark white. portrait is beautiful um, perfectly and framed not, with yeah that there's not right much there. more you can say about a card like this than this is one that's a must own just because of the condition that it's in yeah another mantle card we've and got here we followed it up with just a, one that's graded um a half grade higher and an eight um, these have sold recently at 120,000 up to 150,000 this should be no different on a particular card like this. Once again, another card that does not come up very auction. So get your chance to get this 
in this auction tonight. Tony, I'm going to ask you to hold this oh, one here. This is the best uh, view of me. <laughs> Sorry. So this is another unique item we have here. Uh, it's card related. It's not a card, but it is in the card auction. This is the 1930s Walter Johnson Candy Company Dick Tracy store. This is the store window sign right here. So uh, like that grocery store. Right? Dick Tracy was huge in the 30s, of course, and um, they dominated in the 30s. And great set of cards, and I love how this one looks. He's the Ace of Sleuths. Tony, did you know that? I didn't, but I didn't know Walter Johnson Candy Company. Tell me something about that. <laughs> well, he had a candy company. I had yeah. no idea he ever did. <laughs> candy was very popular at the time, and there was a lot of players who would look for a separate business, a way to invest. Candy was one option, and his was one of the more successful ones. And teaming with Dick Tracy is a good way to do it. I bet he would have struck. He would have got a strike on out of uh, Dick Tracy without any, without any problem with that sidearm delivery. Don't side you deliver. doubt Dick Tracy, Tony. I'm tired of you trashing Dick sorry, Tracy on sorry. the show. I saw the movie in 1989. I'm for it. Madonna. I remember the movie in 1989. So a very unique piece, something uh, your collection needs, especially if you collect the Dick Tracy cards, you need the window sign to go Broad with Broadsides advertisement, I think, is a very underrated thing in this hobby. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, I wish, if this I would have known it, I would have collected that. up. Right yes. here. And also, I love the one cent advertisement. Correct. When was the last time you saw something that you could buy for one cent? But what would have to be back in 1970. <laughs> Why did they put his name on it, though? Then. Walter Johnson's <laughs> name on it. Why not? No, I mean, this is on, on the advertisement, they should have. Yeah, there you go. So, you want to yep. do all those at once. Yep. We're going to bang them out so right there. So, basically, what we also have is a 1952 PSA graded set that. We have a lot of cards that are being run individually, including a 52 Tops Willie Mays. In a PSA 8, it's rare to see a set like this broken down with a lot of high grade material. It includes the likes of, even though that the mantle is graded a 3, it is one that is well centered, we very going. attractive example. You may not get the opportunity of seeing these too often. And like we talked about with the uh, 52 Tops Mantle and a 7, we have all ranges of mantles here. And this is a very nice example that isn't going to cost you six figures. Correct. I think this one right now is at 30 grand. But one, like I said, when you find them well centered like this, take the opportunity to go get it. Um, the other cards in there, you have an Andy Pafko that's in a PSA 7. Another one that's a nice example. Um... Well centered, red back. The estimate on this is ten grand. I believe it's a little bit over that right now. But make sure you get your bids in on this. Two minutes, guys. Two minutes. There we go. All Until right. extended bid. <clears throat> Two minutes, so you need to get your bids in now. Why don't you keep that over there you with got you? Uh, which graphic we got coming up next? Let's make sure we stay on point there. Wow. That's Mike is, that's is in control. I'm very demanding. There we go. There Ooh. we go. Yeah. So let's throw that up right there. Tony, you hold that. Let Lee continue doing what he's doing. This is the 72 Opeachy Baseball Second Series Wax Box. We talked about this one earlier. And a uh, tough year for unopened material for 72. And it's just a beautiful looking one right there. You've got Hall of Famers and uh, stars like Dave Kingman, Ted Simmons, Orlando Cepeda, Lou Brock, Raleigh Fingers, and the World Series card if you want to break it open. Uh, but when it looks this nice, I say uh, keep it as is. Keep Absolutely. it as is. Absolutely. Keep them sealed um, and put them away. We're looking at about eight grand for that, so a nice investment already as is, unopened. And, and, and that market's on fire, isn't it? I mean, that's very just been going crazy yes. last, the last few years. All right, and... Moving right along, Lee. Oh, look at you, how efficient. We're efficient as we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we right. have entered extended. Did I already give you that one? I think I already gave you that one. All this right. This one. 53 well, Bowman Mano. 52 Maybe tops. Oh, no, Maze. PSA 8. Sorry, no, sorry. 27,000. There you go. There you go. Just so the 53 Bowman color is here. Mail, graded a PSA 9. The last time we ever had one of these up at auction, at any auction, was in 2016. They've increased over the last five years. Um, I've seen them go from 14,000 to 58,000. 
That was the last one that sold at 58, um, and they've been on an ever increasing slope. So look for this one uh, and bid away on this. Yeah, and I love the image on this again. one, the post swing look right there. And there you go, up next, another icon. Another icon, you got the 56 Aaron, which was graded in SGC 10, Whew. a grade you rarely see from SGC. Yeah, the ultimate example for them right there. Yes, dead centered, beautiful picture. You're not going to find one better in either PSA or SGC. These are just phenomenal the way they are. And then you got right there that set. And then are we going to squeeze it in? We're going to squeeze it in yeah, somehow. We are. The bids are really starting to come in now. All right, yeah. has extended bidding begun? It has so begun. Extending bidding's begun. Now is when people put in their... Right. They're, they're, this is they're when numbered. the games really begin, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so any lots you bid on, you can continue to bid. You'll see the 30-minute countdown clock ticking. Anytime a bid comes in, that clock is going to reset just for that lot. So, But bidding is still open for Session 2, which is the David Hall T206 collection, <laughs> and more great material in Session 3, which will close Saturday night. But what do you got there? Lee. Right here we have a Give it its due. This expand. is a 1963 Topps Baseball PSA graded set. Every card is graded an 8 or higher. Um, the one thing that you're going to find throughout this auction is we have sets from 1960 to 1968. Every set, with the exception of 1962, the cards have been graded 8 or higher. In the 62 set, it's 7 and higher. Um, the perfect opportunity if you're looking at sets and PSA graded ones, this is one of the few opportunities you're going to see to buy these types of sets. Well, spoken like an expert right there. You now that we've got a time to relax, extended <laughs> yeah. bidding has begun. Um, so Lee Eskowitz, let's give him a proper introduction. He does a lot for Heritage. He works out of our New York office. So if you're in New York, you can stop by and see Lee. Love to just chat, just hang out. Just also, up. he'll do some appraisals. Uh, he's a card <laughs> expert, but he does memorabilia as well, so you can stop in there with that. He attends shows. You still going to shows, Lee? Still oh go God. to shows, probably like ten a year. Wow! But he do. travels a lot though, too, picking we up do. collections. Right. And that's uh, so he'll be in your city if you call us uh, ha.com. And he also processes card consignments. He writes cards, a lot of sets. You write, don't, isn't oh, that what oh, you yeah. mostly do? The sets. Processing of cards and getting the sets written for our catalog auctions, yes. But Lee, uh, no matter the workload, he always has a good time. So he's a fun person <laughs> to have around. He's quick with a joke, as they say. And he answers his phone. <laughs> Every time I call this man up, if I have a question on a card, he answers his phone or he gets back to me. So if you have Lee's very, phone number, very good. call him right call now. Him right now. Call, call him right we're now. We're going to put that to the test. He's got his phone <laughs> right there. He's waiting. Call you get a special waiting. prize if you call Lee on his cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Lee is going to be at the National as well. Everyone you've seen on here is going to be at the National. We're booth 824. You can come by, do free appraisals. Talk about your collection. We'll talk about anything in the hobby. Tony's food interests, maybe. You uh, can bring me some food. Oh. Don't what bring him food. He He'll be fine. <laughs> uh, you're gonna affect my over under on the 75 pounds of meat that you're gonna eat on the week. Uber so bars. Don't bring meat. Yeah. Oh, absolutely over. Uber bars. I'm taking that to the window. Oh, we forgot to give a shout out to Tony's sainted mother, one of our biggest fans. Uh, Miss Geezy, I hope you're still watching and uh, enjoying what you're seeing. Getting a little late. Uh, yeah, she's hanging <laughs> she's in there. She's, in she's there. watching the Brewer game right now, and they're on the West Coast. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're on the West Coast, so she'll be watching. <laughs> so, um, yeah, big thing's going to happen at the National Booth 824. We've also got the Platinum Auction that's going to launch tomorrow, along with our Vintage Photography Auction. But right now, extended bidding has begun, so... Keep an eye on the lots you've already bid on that are in session one. You can still bid on those. You can, of course, bid on our website, bid on your phone, bid on your iPad. Uh, yeah, right no there. phone calls Thank yet you. for Liam. I'm a little <laughs> yeah. disappointed. Well, he doesn't really have many friends. I so don't. Wow. All, of, all of his friends are in this yeah, room working to, right I here. I forgot to send payment out. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. But, uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. And Thanks Lee, a true professional that this few minutes left, he wanted to get the word out to you on those lots so you could get your bids in if you yeah. needed. And you did it. 
My apologies. Next time I'll have longer and I'll be more yeah, than happy expand. to stay as long as needed. Because last give us time in the show, he well. did a ton of sets on here and just dove in. He was like chest deep in sets <laughs> over here talking about the gems you can find. But uh, Lee's great with the sets. So if you have sets and you're going to be at a show or you want to contact us, he's great at mining those sets for the gems that are going to get your collection and your set the most at auction. So a great expert to have. And uh, before you leave, Lee. Here we go. Uh oh. Yeah, back to this, back to this. Um, uh oh. Where do you get these from? I just make them up. Um, all right. So, would you rather start every day right after you wake up having Fred Bolitnikoff give you a 70s Raiders game day application of Stick'em that you have to wear all day? Oh my God. Or, before you begin any meal or snack, you have to sing the entire national anthem at the top of your lungs, and you sound like Roseanne Barr singing it when you do. I'll go with option B. Okay. <laughs> because if I put the stick in my hands and it's going to be there all day, the I am not going to do well you. with the <laughs> Very good. Ruin your career. See, it was yeah. a test. So, it was a test, and he passed. Yeah. So that's the way I have to go. So stop by when we're having lunch at our booth at the National if uh, you want to hear the national anthem, if you're a true patriot or just oh, a yeah. Roseanne Barr fan. And we will sing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lee, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you. A pleasure. Wait, you get to go always. first again? Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah. Don't worry. Next well, time it's you're just all the distance. Right. It's just the distance. <laughs> And uh, as we dis discussed, we have the David Hall T206 collection. We're very excited about it. It's over 5,200 T206 cards, so we're spreading it out over several sales. Tony wanted to sell it all as one lot, <laughs> one big lot. <laughs> one but, lot. Eh, not a great idea. Uh, but I got vetoed. Very famous collector. Uh, his reputation precedes him, and 10 years ago, he launched on a project to put together the most comprehensive T206 set, and he did it, guys. He did it. <laughs> over 5,200 cards. It's estimated nobody's gone over 3,000, so uh, he's a really focused individual. We got to meet him. Uh, very interesting, very nice guy. He did a phenomenal job. Yeah, and just unbelievable. Um, in the past few months, I've learned so much about the T206 <laughs> collection. Everyone here has. He's a master of it, and he was here in the office. He filmed some videos for us, did some promo things, and he just had all that information right at the top of it his head right at his fingertips to pull it out and it's a truly special occasion tomorrow we have session two of this sale is all the david hall t206 collection for this sale it's just under 200 cards and there's some true gems in there so if you're a seasoned t206 collector you should take a look if you're just starting out or have never collected this is a nice time because there's some true rarities in there and you know i could drone on and on about it all day but why not let the man himself tell, tell you about all. it? Just one thing. Hi, I'm Chris Ivey, Director of Auctions with uh, Heritage Sports Collectibles. Uh, I'm sitting here with David Hall to my left, and we're really excited to be with him today to talk to him about his uh, amazing T206 collection, amassed over 10 years and consisting of over 5,000 different T206 combinations. David, thanks for being here. My pleasure. <laughs> tell me a little bit about it. How did you get started with this? Well, uh, in 2009, uh, there was an auction company, now no longer in business, mm -hmm. that had the supposed St. Louis find, as they called it, of drum backs. Drum being one of the rarest of all T206 backs. And they had 32 cards. And of the 32, 12 of them were unique. The only known example of that player with a drum back. And I looked at it and thought about it, and I, I thought, this is special. Mm -hmm. T206 is one of the big sets of all time. Uh, it's an iconic set in our hobby, and I thought this was a great opportunity. So I made my mind up to bid, and the prices were such that I, I bought all 32 cards, just bought them all. Right. The, the auction company must have thought I was crazy, uh, but I did buy them all and paid for them. And uh, I then thought, you know what? Uh, this is a pretty good start to a back set. Maybe I'll do the back set. Then I started talking to people about it and people were telling me things like, it's never been done. Uh, it's a lifetime project. And I thought that just made me more interested in doing it. And as I got more involved and began to realize how rare some of these backs are, 
uh, I just became more and more obsessed and it, it was literally a daily chase for over 10 years. So it all started with those 32 drum bags that you purchased in 2009. Yes. When you made the when you made the decision to purchase those, did you understand at that point what back collecting would entail? That it, there's over 5,500 different combinations. Is that correct? A little over 5,200. Okay. Okay. And were you aware of it at that point? Of I was aware of the of the the rare backs because uh -huh. whenever one would appear in auction, uh, the auction company would make a big deal of it. I didn't realize how difficult it would be. I didn't realize how truly rare a lot of the backs are and um, how much time and effort it would take. But the more I got into it, uh, the more it, it fed my excitement and the more determined I became. So prior to that point, was there really a roadmap for you to follow or did you do the research on your own and kind of develop that, that roadmap of the combinations? Well, there, there are so, a few books that have been written. Uh, there's a pamphlet which tried to describe it. Uh, I really had to create my own spreadsheet and uh, there are some experts uh, that uh, have studied it for decades, way longer than me. and. Uh, I started uh, my own research project and literally would go through all the auctions and eBay. When I went to the National Sports Convention, I would look at every T206 card and write down which back it was. And I looked at over uh, 100,000 cards. Another expert, Scott Reeder, did a similar thing in the PSA population report, of course, breaks it up somewhat. And so we seen things and it's all pretty consistent. You know, over 50% of the cards, a little over, are Piedmont backs. Right. 25, 28% are Sweet Caporal. And then, you know, the drums and use, it's are really rare. Red Hindu's rare. Broadleaf 460 is off the charts rare. Uh, and we all came to the same conclusions based on what we saw. So yeah, I there was some research and I tried to push that forward. So the research is pretty amazing that you were able to amass with some other collectors as far as the percentage of, of you know, how many common backs there really are. And it's come to be known that about 80% of the T206s out there are common backs. So, you know, it gives collectors just an insight into really how scarce these, you know, 14 additional backs really are, only making 20% of, uh, of the set. What you've been able to do here in a 10 year period is a mass over 5,000 of, of these different combinations. It's really incredible. I don't think it can ever be duplicated. Thank you. And uh, I've been told that nobody's had 3,000 different and I have a little over 5,000. Uh, it's a set I wanted to complete, but uh, at my age, I probably can't do it. Uh, I have mixed emotions about selling. I'm probably selling too early because the story hasn't been told. Uh, the rarity of these cards hasn't uh, been fully appreciated yet, uh, in my opinion, but it's my time in life to sell the set. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as this information comes out, more be people become aware of it. Um, you know, I think we'll look back in a decade uh, and, and realize how, how scarce these combinations really are, and uh, and the de desirability, I'd imagine, is only, only going to increase. Well, when I used to go to the National, if I saw one or two broadly 460s, any player, I, I would feel I'd gone to heaven. Uh, they're that rare, and uh, I would just buy them unless uh, somebody was insane on the price. Right. So over 5,000 T206s in the collection, do you have a favorite? My very favorite card is the Ty Cobb with the Ty Cobb back. When I was a kid, there were two people that were uh, the pinnacle of human existence that aren't now. One was George Washington. We were taught he was the father of our country. Uh -huh. uh, now my kids weren't really taught that way. And the other was Ty Cobb and Babe Ruth. But Ty Cobb was 
you know, the most hits, the highest batting average, uh, an animal on the base pass, mm -hmm. played with uh, intensity maybe never seen since. Uh, and the Ty Cobb back, you know, very rare. Before the lucky seven find, mm -hmm. <laughs> which was great, uh, there were maybe only 10 or 12 known when they were 30, 40,000, I got the wild idea in my head, I was just gonna buy them all. Right. Okay, they're $30,000, $40,000, I'll just buy all of them, all 12 of them. Then uh, I, I finally bought one though for about $100,000 and I thought, well, maybe I won't buy them all. And plus I was really focused. Advice that you would give to anyone that's thinking about undertaking this type of collection. Uh, I had, I'll answer it in two parts. First, general collectibles advice. And uh, obviously I know a lot about coins and other collectibles, uh, but I, the people who have been successful, which I define as having fun, not having bad experiences, doing okay financially in collectibles have done one of two things and or one of two things. The first is intense specialization. Okay. So you really focus on something, as I've done on T206 Backs, mm -hmm. or uh, Harry Bass did on gold coins, uh, or a particular series. So you're in love with 54 Tops baseball, that's, that's your set. Mm -hmm. The other thing is the concept of forever. What is the iconic item? Mm -hmm. Okay, a Babe Ruth bat, a 52 Tops Mickey Mantle card, Ty Cobb cards. Ty Cobb is forever. The Hall of Fame is forever. So if you're in sports, think about the Hall of Fame. Right. And think about an intense focus, a specialization, what you like, mm -hmm. not what I tell you to buy, but what you like. If you, if you collect what you mm -hmm. like, uh, you'll do better, you'll have you won't have bad experiences, you'll pay the right price. So focus and also remember the iconic items are always the iconic items. That's right. Yeah, I'm sure you gave it a lot of thought uh, to come to this point. What made you decide to, to sell through Heritage Auctions? Uh, well, uh, the decision to sell was based on you know my age, my uh, estate planning, et cetera. Heritage was an easy decision for me. I've known the principles of Heritage since the early 70s, then tens of millions of dollars worth of business with them, probably a hundred million. Uh, I have uh, supreme confidence in Heritage and their financial standing. Uh, look, results are important and Heritage gets great results and I knew they would. Uh, the cards, though, do speak for themselves, but part of results is actually getting paid. Uh, this is millions of dollars, and so I want to be paid, and I want to be paid on time, and I have 100% confidence that with Heritage, I don't have to worry about the money at all. I also have some pride in what I've done, and I wanted to present it in a great way, and Heritage catalogs are the best in the, in the hobby, by far. And Heritage, I bought from, you know, many different categories from Heritage. And it's very easy to buy what you want in a Heritage auction. It makes it really easy on the buyer, which helps the seller. And secondly, the way things are presented, uh, especially the Heritage website, is just fantastic. 100% Heritage has the best collectibles website in the world. Period, end of story. It's what you need to know, it's there. You don't need to go to any other website, in my opinion. It is absolutely the best. And I buy from everybody, okay? I'm not a monogamous buyer. I buy from everybody from the biggest, Sotheby's and Christie's, to the small eBay sellers. I buy from everybody. And Heritage is the easiest experience for me and has absolutely the best technology and website. The auctions that are coming up in 2019 that are gonna be offered through Heritage, uh, why, why was it broken up in the manner uh, for the three different auctions? Tell us a little bit about each auction. The first 
uh, auction is kind of an intro to back collecting. There's some real rarities, including some, you know, Walter Johnson rarities. Uh, there's uh, a smattering of different grades. It's kind of a, a, an intro to back collecting. Uh, the second auction, I thought, look, I focused on the backs, but I also was an obsessive upgrader. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if I had a seven and an eight came up, I tried to buy the eight. And if you take my 523 cards and register it as a Tito six set, uh, even though it's on the backs, the condition is so good that it's one of the better sets. So let's take the best example of you know, my best red tie cob, my best green tie cob, my, you know, my best of everything, and see what that set looks like. That's the second auction. The third one is I've been told that I have the only complete sovereign set ever. I'm not sure that that's correct, but so I put all sovereigns in that weren't in either of the first two auctions. And a, another smattering of kind of like really interesting cards. So the first two auction, the first and third auction are kind of a, Intro, here's how it works. The second auction being, here's the best of the best of the best. I'm sure that uh, Tito assist collectors around the world are gonna be very excited about these offerings coming up. I really wanna thank you too for, uh, for, for choosing us and allowing us to, uh, to present this amazing collection uh, to collectors around the world. Thank you, David. Thank you, Chris. <laughs>
from then till now have not changed. Wow. wow. So they have not created another wow. one since. I mean, that's the great years. thing about this. Uh, for those who don't know, just the T206 set, there's a wide variety of advertising backs for each card, and some are quote unquote common. No T206 card is very common, but the others are incredibly rare, and the David Hall collection has has them all. I mean, that's the only way to say I, it. He had the most uh, complete master set. Uh, I believe it was. Uh, Complete over 5,500 cards. Right. I think he got to 5,300. Right. Um, and yeah, just an absolutely incredible collection, and just all the, with all the rare backs, and to see so many of them. This auction. Um, oh, just to interrupt you for a second. Our intern came in. Can you grab us some waters? Thank you. Please continue. Wow. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Keep going. I want to hear more of that. <laughs> Heritage auctions intern vice president. <laughs> <laughs> I get him confused all the time. I get him confused all the time. <laughs> but uh, this auction of David Hall cards, the focus is rarity. Right. Uh, the rare backs, uh, nice high grade cards, but th this auction is a focus on rarity. Uh, part two is coming up in September. Right. Uh, that uh, focus is quality. Right. Uh, we're still in the process of registering the cards. I think when we're done, it'll be the number three or four set on the registry. Not exactly sure where it's going to place right now. And then December is a really nice one. Um, he is no, David Hall is known for having the most complete set of sovereign tobacco backs. Right. And that auction is going to feature his sovereign cards. And so, so that's that really September great. sale and the December sale will, every single one of those cards is going to be at our booth in, at the National. Correct. So mm -hmm. if you want to come see him, uh, whether you're interested in bidding or you just want to see something you're never going to see again, yeah, my love. Uh, stop by booth 824. Yes. I so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, here's another great one. Pete, I know you're a fan of this one. Who is this it? This is the Ed oh, yes. Griminger. Yes. And this is, a lot of people love error cards. Uh, that's Billy you know, Ripken, are you talking that kind of error card? Or not what? that vulgar oh, error, okay. I'm error sorry. card, I'm but sorry. thank you. But this is a very interesting and unique print anomaly here. It's got the, um, I mean, first of all, it's one of the rarest versions of the rarest back yes. on there. So yes. to start off right there, and a very rare card, he's a minor leaguer. Uh, so Southern leaguer. Southern leaguer, yes. And uh, are you a big Grimminger fan? Hank Grimminger. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we sold his collection years ago. So it's got the Factory 649 overprint on the back as well, and it's upside down. Yes. So, you know, just a printing error, but that's one thing that some collectors... There's a million ways to collect them, yeah. the T206 set. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can do it by backs, you can do it by uh, Southern Leaguers, um, you can do it by player, by team, of course, but then errors, there's quite a few printing errors, but this is one of the most unique ones we've ever seen. Yes. And mm -hmm. so a very interesting one, um, the rarest version of a scarce back brand as well, on top of the error. So a very cool card and one of the more interesting ones in his collection. These are closing Technic, tomorrow night. It's a printer scrap, but um, again, very fascinating because everything Mike said, and uh, obviously just a, a sheet that they were using to set up the press and somehow made it into the public <laughs> into the domain. And at the time they were probably thinking, ah, nobody's going to want this. <laughs> and then now it's going to, what are we thinking, 20000 for that? For that one, yes. 20000 Wow. All right, so this one up next is the Linux Black. Clark Griffith batting, and this is the only Linux back on the PSA census for this car, for the old Fox, yep. if you were. And uh, very cool portrait as well, uh, the pitcher and the manager of the Senators. And um, yeah, so like we talked about, very rare backs. This is the one of one right here. If you're looking for a Linux back of um, Clark Griffith, this is, this is the only one you can have. It's closing tomorrow night. And... Uh, one thing about Griffith, do you guys know this? Uh, he originated the practice of having the president throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Who was the first oh, one? 24 World Series? Taft. Taft. Yeah, so uh, God, you're, not you gonna, guys. you're not going to beat me on presidential <laughs> knowledge. Uh, T206 maybe, but uh, not the presidential knowledge. But yeah, when he was with the Senators, he started that. That's become a great tradition in baseball that continues to this day. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah. 
Beautiful card here, incredibly rare, and we're going to be saying incredibly rare about so many. <laughs> you of have these already, cards. Mike. <laughs> I know. So those of you who are doing it as a drinking game, I apologize, or you're welcome. However, you are. We're going to ban uh, that word. You're going to have to think of. You're going to have to get a thesaurus and uh, think of a different word every time. Scarce, auction, scarce. Unique. When I was writing this auction, F key F1 was incredibly rare. Key F2 was. One of the <laughs> <laughs> but just so you know, people have some perspective on this, they printed thousands of these cards. Uh, there are pressman sheets known for some Tito Sixes, and this was not just a matter of telling them to print a quantity. This was by a day. They, they just started on a particular day, ended on a particular day, and let the presses roll. So the fact that there's still, and still there's that few on some of these brands known, just goes to show you how, you know, how just incredible. You're just not going to see these very often. Right. There's a little plug. overhead heritage ah, Mike Sadler, he's, he's everywhere. They, they pump our own advertisements into our workplace. <laughs> <Yes>. so. <laughs> so we don't forget. Like we already work here, Harry. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you can never have too much advertisement. It's rule number one. Always be marketing. Yes. All right, what do you got there, Pete? This is Dick Eakin, who oh, yeah. unfortunately probably very few people have ever heard of, but he's famous in the hobby because this particular Tito 6 feels a drum cigarette back. Uh, again, drum is uh, among the highest high on the list of rarities um i remember years ago a dealer announcing at a national saying he'll pay a thousand dollars for any drum back that he finds and from what i obviously i wasn't there the whole time but from what i gather he no one took him up on his offer they're they're that difficult to find and now for a thousand dollars for a drum back is actually a bargain yeah so, so that guy was a genius <laughs> exactly whatever you said well, about did. him yeah, at he, the time he, he knew i mean then you know these brands it's not like these things are just going to come up every day uh Hopefully, you know, with the promotion of Dave Hall's collection, you know, someone will be willing to, to let their precious cards <laughs> go. But, um, uh, yeah, it, they, they just don't, uh, you know, just don't appear like... Uh, and David Hall said the same thing. He used to go to the National. If anybody had a drum back, he was going to have to buy it. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Because mm -hmm. it was it, drum back, Lennox specs, use it. Those are brands that if you don't buy them when you see them... You'll You're not going to see them again? the opportunity again. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And just... Uh, a little more showing off. Uh, another obviously yeah. popular player in the Tito Six that is Walter Johnson. Um, he's got two cards. Both of these are his uh, hands at chest um, poses. Kind of like the Cobb, though. You know, they could easily have been, you know, Piedmont or Sweet Capital, but that would so be fun. <laughs> <laughs> we like the challenge here. Exactly. So for our collectors, we have a choice. We have a, a Broadleaf cigarettes back or a drum back. Of the great Walter Johnson. Wow. Again, the, the the Broadleaf, I believe, is one of only two known or the only one known. Wow. Um, again, probably the you know premier entries in this set because these are you know premier player, premier brand. You don't get a better combination than that. And again, if you've been looking for these cards, this is probably going to be your only opportunity to pick them up. Because the people who win these, they're so rare, likely they're going into their collection. T two hundred six is a massive collection. People who collect it are famous for hoarding them yeah, when absolutely. they find these rare Especially ones. Especially when it's a Walter Johnson card. Yes. I mean, even if you're not doing a set, you're going to buy a Walter Johnson card, and with a back like that, that's going to be the premier piece in, in your collection. Right. Yeah. A lot of people are going to be interested. So oh, if you need it, tomorrow night's the night. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. So right here, we've got the... <clears throat> this is the Christy Mathewson with the Hindu brown back. Pete talked about the Hindu back earlier, and uh, this is the highest graded example for the brand. So more one of one rarity here in that, uh, and Christy Mathewson, did I mention Christy Mathewson yeah. is on this one? So the T2, T2 of six set has a lot of uh, undervalued or unknown players, uh, you know, the Southern League part, and a lot of commons, but you know, there are these legendary player names, and when you get it with a rare back like that, and this one's got a nice bold portrait, I love this uh, this image of him, and almost perfect centering on a T206 card. Yeah, that's especially with this card. The, the remarkable thing about this collection, you know, obviously he picked quality cards. Every one of them I could have written, you know, Bold, beautiful colors, nice clean yeah. red borders, and there was a great emphasis, rare, rare, rare. Yeah, great <laughs> emphasis on eye appeal. Yes, for sure. him, Absolutely. and uh, so that's a great thing about him. It has the rare back, and then when you look at the front, it's just beautiful. Look, I mean, look at yeah. that. Tony. I love that. Take a look. The colors are amazing the on September these. September auction is huge on visual appeal. I mean, there's qual physical quality there, but visual appeal. Every card is yeah. Uh, 
It is impressive. And then now, moving along, we've got a man who needs no introduction. One of the rarest cards in the T206, <laughs> just period, is Eddie Plank. And this is Eddie Plank with a Hindu brown back. No. No? I wish! Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. He would have been like that one day in the office. Sweet back. Oh, sorry. God, no, sorry. Really? <laughs> uh, one of the three toughest we have an update in the set. So this is the Sweet Capperol back. But the Plank card is so hard to come by. And this is a great one. It's a PSA three, mm -hmm. and um, you know the estimate is seventy five grand for it. So right there, right off the bat, you can see how hard it is to come by this one. And beautiful example. Look at that blue background there. Yeah. Uh, he's looking off into the distance. Yeah, they they really for all the cards they really pick nice deep saturated colors, and when they survive nicely. They're just so impressive. It's, you know, obviously in my job, I've gone through quite a few T206s. It's just one of those sets you just don't get bored of. Sure. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, it's I like some coworkers. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. For the record, he was looking at Tony there. Yeah. <laughs> he was really looking at me. I may have to hand in my badge tomorrow. And your playbook. Yes. I, I want to give a shout out to Judy watching in uh, Georgia. She's hey, Judy. staying up with us late hey, tonight. Now he waves at the TV that we have. Oh, here, I'm sorry. I'm camera. sorry, Judy. Like, my bad. My bad. Yeah. We still got a lot to learn here. All right. We're still working out the kinks. No wonder why I keep looking there. I'm like, I'm looking on the side. Oh, what, what time we got, Tony? Let's, let's get an update. Oh my goodness. Uh, 10:36. 10:36. You have 24 more minutes. Wait. Extended bidding still going. Hey, we're gonna go as long as we're gonna go. Don't you worry about <laughs> it, right. Tony. But if you're still out there, you're watching the auction. You're bidding on items. Uh, you're looking for items to bid on in session two or session three, or you just want to learn about this T206 collection, let's hear your questions. What have you got? Um, there's a lot to learn about T206. One thing David Hall said to me is no one could ever know everything about it. No. And he is certainly one of the foremost experts. So him saying that uh, really carries a lot of weight. And I know I've learned a lot about it in the last few months. And if you guys have any questions, we'd love to answer them. Uh, please let us know. Yeah, now, what do you got over there? Set. Uh, this is Moose McCormick, um, common player, um, you know, but with this one, Great name, broadly though. three yeah, fifty Moose. back, yeah. <laughs> um, again, uh, as far as I know, I believe this is a one of a kind, right. it's the only only graded one. Again, broadleaf cigarettes back. Uh, you'll notice with broadleaf and drum that the one of a kind and one or two known is very common. It's so much fun, and and when new collections come in, it's 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 kind of weird because sometimes you get more excited about looking for the back of the cards. <laughs> in the front, in front you see wow. the fronts a lot. Yeah, that's but interesting. But then what can that back be? You know, because that forty dollar sweet capital can be a thousand dollar broadleaf, which is the flip of a page. So that's, in uh, fact, a few in this collection are slab backwards with the back. Uh, there were a couple like that. We yeah. did. Uh, uh, I'd never seen that really? before because the back was he, so they, rare. They made, yeah, they made a special uh, courtesy for him. Yeah, okay. I mean, he did found the company. Well, I guess <laughs> he paid his dues <laughs> enough that he gets. Okay, he gets, so, 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 uh, so wow, that's interesting. Very special cards were were slabbed with, with the back showing. Very cool. Hmm. Very cool. Tony, yeah. did you mention something about presidential trivia earlier? I did uh -oh. mention something about well, this. You know, Dustin Johnson in our currency department is going to put you to the test. Dustin oh, Johnson is watching. Yeah. Dustin, thank yeah, you. No, Dustin. <laughs> Asking which president is on the five thousand dollar federal note reserve. Whoa! Yeah, but that's Whoa. a currency question. That's not fair. All right, come on. Uh, say it again. The five thousand. Uh, which president is on the five thousand federal reserve note? Let's see. I've never even seen one of those. <laughs> I think he's got a couple probably in. Um, it's not Grant. No. I How don't about know. Jefferson? Not Jefferson. Oh, I have no idea. It is James Madison. Madison. That was his next guess. Oh, <laughs> that was next. <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple of $5,000. I love his, <laughs> his, I love his work. <laughs> I love his work it's on the coffee. Federalist Papers, is all I can say about <laughs> yeah. that. But, uh, if anyone would like to uh, send me a $5,000 Treasury note to uh, prove, Dustin, if prove you're watching. this fact, uh, you can just send it to HA. It'll make its way to me. <laughs> Unbelievable, these currency guys. Yeah, they're... Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, what do you got, Pete? All right, our next The currency specialty. guys are dying to know. <laughs> Dustin Johnson is. <laughs> He's thinking uh, of more trivia. Billy Pertel. Again, one of the uh, common players in the set, a lovely fielding portrait of him. And what makes this one special, again, is our drum back. 
And as far as I know, this is one of the highest graded drum backs uh, known. Um, I'm a, in a PSA holder, and again, just uh, one of those situations where if this was a Piedmont back, it would be a you know a couple hundred dollars. But because it's a drum back, we're talking thousands and thousands. Absolutely, that's, that's what makes this set so much fun. <laughs> You got some other big dogs I see over there. Yeah, one or two. We'll get to those. We'll get to <laughs> sorry, those. Just sorry, relax, sorry. Tony. Don't get ahead excited. Of us. I don't get to see those cards all the time. <laughs> As I said, you're always excited, Tony. I know. We know catch that. Catch up. Catch up. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> uh, this next beauty is Frank Smith. What's special about Frank is he has a Lennox back, but uh, there's a few brands: Lennox, Old Mill, and Hindu, where the backs are actually found with two different colors. So your traditional Lennox is black back, but they also experimented with brown. Right. So this is a Lennox brown color back. Uh, again, I believe the only one, mm. the only one known. A rare variety rare, of a rare, rare variety. Black. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you just never. Yeah. Exactly. If, if a Lennox black back wasn't hard enough, that was enough of a challenge for you. <laughs> you gotta get the brown. You gotta get the brown one. <laughs> sure. <laughs> He's just like a kid in a candy store. I know, I love it. This is my job, folks. Oh, aren't you lucky? This is why I went to college. This <laughs> I love it. Education pays off. There you kids. go, kids. <laughs> the only thing I proved my mom wrong about was when she said, you're not going to make money with baseball cards. <laughs> oh, that's great. She was wrong about one thing. Everything else. Everything Dead else on. I should have listened to. <laughs> Uh, this is a really cool card because uh, the player, forgive me for not being politically correct, is Dummy Taylor, um, <laughs> hearing impaired, early hearing impaired player. Um, one of the more pop, again, one of the more popular cards in the set be because of that. Cool pose. Cool to, pose. Uh, this one. Yeah. Uh, this particular one is a Broadleaf 350 back, uh, graded VG3. Again, I think the only, the only one known. That's right. So it's it's just one of those special cards, and uh, it was actually in the 1880s. There was another I was thinking deaf player. I, I'm like, there's two he, guys named because Duff. he couldn't hear the umpire. That's how they developed the umpire calling balls and strike signals. So he could so he oh, knew, wow. so he knew what the pitch was. I think he's from Wisconsin. And is that why they do the motion for throwing people out? <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> Dummy hoy, you umpire are out of here. <laughs> Let's see yours. Uh, Tony's an umpire, as we discussed earlier. Strike. You ever thrown anyone out before? Uh, just unruly fans sometimes. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty weird for me to get mad, I'll He's be He's going out to the stands and throwing yeah, people you, out. You, leave. No sauerkraut on that hot dog? <laughs> <laughs> no, no snotty little eight-year-old get out of here. <laughs> You're not paying attention to the game? You're I got out. the last laugh. <laughs> Kid, if your mom yells at me one more time, <laughs> you're going with her right now, right to the parking lot. Okay, the next up is again. I might be a little biased. The mm -hmm. Greatest pitcher ever, Cy Young. Okay. Five hundred eleven victories, career span the centuries. Isn't there someone Rich, about? The Isn't there someone Islands. about to top that record though? If I have... No. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, no. look at the grin on his face. Wow. Walter Johnson, as great as he was, uh, came is the only one that came within 100 victories. Yeah. Uh, obviously, a record that's never gonna. You know, he did not have a setup reliever, a mid reliever, and then a closer helping yeah. him win a game. <laughs> was, oh, your arm's tired. Get back in the box. <laughs> he didn't have the shift. To <laughs> help yes. Uh -huh. And this, also again, modern this is, medicine. <laughs> this is one of the most popular cards in the set. His Absolutely. portrait is one of the iconic cards. Um, and it's just it's just become one of the cards that, that defines him as a collectible. Uh, unfortunately, it's just a sweet capital back. Sorry, but oh, uh, oh, it is Cy Young. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> that one looks great. Yeah, it's, Our it's just a beautiful looking card. Yep. Oh. All right. So tomorrow night is session two. We'll be closing the David Hall collection. That's the first taste. We're gonna have the next taste, part two, in September. And uh, there's some real gems in there that yes. we're mm -hmm. just so excited about. We're going to go ahead and show them to you right now. Whoa! One of, one of the nicest uh, sets that, that will be on the registry. A couple of prizes that are going to be in there. Again, Ty Cobb, Red Portrait, very popular card. This one's incredibly special because this is one of the few player brands from that era. This is a Ty Cobb tobacco card. Yeah, Ty Cobb, Ty Cobb back. Going to be, yeah, Ty Cobb, Cobb back, which is something you don't hear very often. Unless you added, it's a reprint afterward. Um, but <laughs> this, this David is just, Hall said this is his favorite. 
Yeah, I, I, I can understand. I know there's a lot of debate about is it really a T206, and that, that, <clears throat> that'll go on and on. But uh, this is just one of the, the most fascinating cards in the hobby. For years, there were probably about a half dozen known. Right. It was recently a fine, so now I think there's a whole whopping 12. <laughs> right, <or whatever. laughs> yeah, there's a full dozen. <laughs> there's a full dozen now. <laughs> and, and what's really cool, um, the belief was these cards were not issued in tobacco packs, but in tobacco tins, Ty Cobb tobacco tins. Incredibly rare. We've got, like, has to be the nicest tin on the planet. Oh, it's beautiful. Actually, just incredible. It's it obviously never circulated. Right. How, how something like that just got set aside, whatever, but... And how he found it. it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And it's just a beautiful tin, you see, and that will also be in the auction, so if you'd be a car to lose you, you got you got the you tin. Got the you tin. Got an awesome consolation prize. Although that one's not going to be cheap either. <laughs> no, Who's this? Six <laughs> figures. <laughs> yeah, this is guy, some of you might recognize him, but this is the the hobby's holy grail. Uh, I don't care what condition it is in. It is just a. There's just something about it's it. It's a thrill like to it's, see it. Yeah, just all the stories you hear, and and then all of a sudden when you see one, it's just like there, there's just something about it. There, there's an aura right. about it. The, the all the things about why he didn't want tobacco or whatever. Just um, they're so hard to find, regardless of the condition. Obviously, you know this one. This one is missing borders. Who cares? I, I'll put it in my collection in a second. I mean, here in our department, we have people that have been doing collecting, card collecting or memorabilia, whatever their specialty or both, their whole lives. And they've seen everything, especially when you work at Heritage. We've seen some of the rarest and most incredible and most remarkable items you can possibly believe. Uh, we made a music video about it even. Um, <laughs> but when a Honus Wagner card comes in, we've been lucky. Everybody to stops. What Everyone doing. stops yeah. what they're doing and yes. takes a look. You have to look at it. you got to get a... A selfie with it or whatever it's just that <laughs> iconic that people who have been doing this forever still get a gleam in their eye when they see it i get um, nervous even i mean you yeah, you could you walk give it a smell tony i know you love to no, smell jerseys no. <laughs> just have it in my hand for two seconds and before pete gave me the look of death no he didn't <laughs> Mike, actually it's not that kind of show <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have this stuff from the september auction and the december auction for david hall Every single one of those cards is going to be at our booth at the National. We're going to have a lot of them on display, but all of them are available if you want a lot view. And this one will definitely be on display. So if you've never seen one before, come by booth 824. Yes, absolutely. You absolutely. should definitely take a look. And we're going to have a big cutout of a Honus Wagner card. You can put your face in there. You can be Honus can be Wagner. Honus you can, Wagner. Be, you can <laughs> prove how iconic you are. So David Hall, session two tomorrow night. Closes the same situation as tonight. Extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. Central Time. So go ahead and get your bids in on that. If you're a seasoned T206 collector, if you've never done it before, go ahead and take a look. Um, it's a voluminous collection, so mm -hmm. there are ones in there if you're just starting out that are good to start out with. And, of course, the rare ones of one that if you are a serious collector and you need to round out your T206 collection, these are the ones that you need to have. And Pete, thank you for joining oh, us, welcome. our resident T206 expert. Can I throw out one, one little fact? Absolutely. I've been doing this over 10 years. I would say at least once a week, I get a call or an email, I've got a T206 Wagner. <laughs> and, um, and that's time, why we've like, sold okay. 8,000 of them. <laughs> exactly, no yeah. Way. And every time you, know, you, you look into it, you ask for pictures, ask for photos, one time in 10 years, it was actually a real t <laughs> It was. So wow. be careful. There's a lot of reprints out there. There's a lot of forgeries out there. But yeah, one time in over 10 years. But that felt great, right? Yeah, yeah, so awesome. that keeps you going every yes, time. Absolutely. I'm like, oh my God, there's nothing wrong with this one. <laughs> <laughs> so the monster is an awesome thing to collect. And uh, our entertainment department has a monster of a lot up right now and what it's is a it? cult you classic can't. and a special little twist on it you've probably seen this movie but you haven't seen this section of it take a look
I love that line. I don't uh, like scary movies, please. <laughs> but uh, a great piece right there. The <laughs> hidden reel, the unseen reel of outtakes. And uh, I know a lot of people who are very interested in that. So just talking about heritage auctions, whatever you collect, whatever you want to get into collecting, we give have us a call. that for you. Yeah, give us a call. Tony would love to talk to you. I love to. So what else do we, we have? We did session Mike? one. Yes. We did session two, which is the David Hall. So we get session three, which closes Saturday night. Same thing, extended bidding at 10 p.m. And there's some amazing material in there. We're going to give some of it a shout out. It's uh, stuff for the more affordable collector, we'll okay. say. Uh, people that are above me, but a below David Hall, we're going to say. Okay. 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 So right in there. And uh, there's some great items, like if you can't afford a 52. Uh, mantle. Tops mantle and a seven, perhaps, but you just want to get one. There's some in there, and we have some great unopened material, which I'm a big fan of, especially the uh, non sports. The ones. graphics on those non sports. Yes. Off the charts. So. Um, Except the Incredible Hulk. That still scares me. Yes. We have one outside, and I kind of. It's smashing. I mean, that's Ooh, it. Look at you. Yes. Wow. Um, so, if you got outbid on, on lots, Tonight, there's probably some other of those cards in the next level down. You can take a look at that in session three, Saturday night. And we're going to talk about a few of those lots right now. And uh, Miss Erin Parker was supposed to join us right now. Uh, she works in our operations department. She was on our last show, job. you may remember. Uh, she is an incredibly hard worker and very entertaining, and she is a huge Star Wars fan, although she's got a very hot opinion about Star Wars. Her favorite Star Wars movie? Episode one. <laughs> I yeah, love it. Yeah, she's the one. The crowd. Wow. Don't throw anything. She's not here. Um, <laughs> she loves Maul? it. Uh, she loves Darth Maul. Wow. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge Padme fan, too, and uh, that's where hey, it all began. Has but... she seen the other ones or not? <laughs> Sorry, Aaron. I'm I just hope kidding. she's not watching. Whoa. Uh, but she gets up at like 5 a.m., so she's probably not watching right now. <laughs> well, she can now. get up at 4 and start watching the other ones. But uh, she is an outstanding worker and a great part of our department. And so this is for her. This is the 1977 Topps Star Wars Series 2 Wax Box. And, uh, I mean, everyone's a Star Wars fan. So, oh, I love it. Um, and this has the classic graphics on it right there. Take a yes. look at that. Uh, it's not exactly the movie poster, because that is not Mark Hamill. Boy. There, and that is not <laughs> Carrie Fisher. Tops kind of struggled on and... the uh, Luke Skywalker, <laughs> but they made up on the sides. They have photos, I think. So, but, yeah, well. they've got the photos on the sides of them. But I love this, too. And uh, our movie poster department sells a movie poster version that that is this mm -hmm. right here. Um, a little better quality. I hate to say I can't afford it. I've tried many times, and I always get outbid. But... This is great. This is uh, there's 36 unopened packs in here. It's a GAI Near Mint Plus 7.5. Very little wear on it, but uh, a very and those, cool piece. Those have gone up and up and up. Just with the movies coming out, and as more people do, and more fans are Whole out new there. generation. Yeah. Getting into it. It transcends um, generations, as we say. And here's something uh, <laughs> not so many people are getting into these days. This is uh, not so many people are getting not into. Not so many people. They should. They should give it its due. They did have a reboot, but uh, what is? Oh know, God! Uh, this is the 1963 tops Beverly Hillbillies complete set. People, you got the Jethro rookie card in here. <laughs> so the complete set. Ellie Mae. Ellie Mae. Wow. Yes. Uh, but there are some fantastic cards in here, <laughs> and I saw this and just had to pull it out. Um, I love the non-sports cards, as you know, especially the entertainment ones. And, uh, yeah, some great stuff in here. You've got the, uh, that one-way sign is wrong, it's pointing the other way. <laughs> just great humor from the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> He's been waiting uh, all day to say that, I guarantee it. <laughs> but it's a cool set and uh, one of those obscure things that if you grew up watching this show or like me when you were homesick from school, watching reruns. you would watch the reruns. Yeah. Leave it to be Why are Magnus doing quotes over there? I mean, I got <laughs> sick occasionally, not every time. <laughs> but you'd watch the reruns and you'd just laugh and be like, this is what people thought entertainment was in the 60s. Um, very cool. 
I like this set, and it's the complete set, so if you want to dive in, just go ahead and get the whole thing right off the bat. There's no reason to mess Mike, around. Mike, you sounds like, like you could really uh, bid on that. I mean, it sounds like you really want that I'll one. think about it. I'll think about it. We'll see. Um, but actually, this is the last not lot we're going to talk about tonight, and uh, in my opinion, it's the best lot in the whole auction. And, better than uh, the last one? You better than the you last one. You seem so excited. Way better than the last one. And in fact, we're going to need some uh, camera work to get oh in close on some of these. This is the 1966 Don Russ Marvel Superheroes Graded Collection, Tony. Don Russ made cards in the 60s. Yes, I thought, I thought it was 1981 did. with baseball. So. Oh, wow, that's pretty neat. And there are some gems in here. You got all your favorites. Uh, Captain America, the Hulk, and of course Thor, Spider-Man, you have to. And uh, I like this one. This one appears in the uh, Spider-Man comics, um, rereading the entire series of Spider-Man, all over 800 issues. And uh, the early issues have this often, this pose right here where he's thinking and you get Spidey and Peter Parker right there in one image. So a great card. Like the Nolan that. Ryan, Jerry Kuzman. Exactly. Kind of? okay. It's just like that. Bad. Sports, yeah, sports, sports, sports. You can always <laughs> bring it back to sports. You got a great Captain America one here. You got Captain America and Bucky. There's uh I thought that was Robin. I'm sorry. It's scoot not scoot over. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is uh, the Invincible Iron Man. Thank you very oh much. God. Shout out to uh, my Iron Man fans out there. Aaron White, and, Matt Griffith. Uh, they're going to yeah. kill me tomorrow. And the back of it is a poster that you could put the whole set oh, okay. together. And uh, so you can see Spidey's hand on the back of this one. <laughs> and uh, this would be Iron Man's foot right here. So uh, if you're a Marvel fan, um, Marvel's made a few indie movies lately. I don't know if you saw them or have heard about them. Uh, you know, they're kind of in the art house theaters. Um, but they were kind of popular. They got a little buzz. And uh, so if you are into Marvel and you've never owned a Marvel card, Saturday night you can get a huge collection. It's not the complete set. It's almost the complete set. But uh, it's one of the best comic book sets you can get. So I highly recommend it. Um, I own this set. Uh, so, not this set, but a set like it, and it's very satisfying. I'm just going to say, yeah, you look so excited right now. Beverly Hillbilly, Beverly Hillbillies, I can barely say that. <laughs> and that. Um, Justin once I, Johnson said that episode one of Beverly Hillbillies is better than episode one of Star Wars. So, it's a fight. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to pass that on to Aaron. I mean, I tend to agree, actually. I can't remember episode one of the Beverly Hillbillies, but, um, you know, it doesn't have Jar Jar Binks in it. So that's, <laughs> that's a step up right there. A step up right there. Jar -Jar. So, a... I'm going to say Dustin's right on that. He's right a lot of the time. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Aaron may disagree, but maybe they can arm wrestle or something. We can have a debate. Absolutely. Next Facebook Live. So, we want to thank everyone out there for joining us tonight. It's always a lot of fun. We hope you guys were entertained, you learned a little something, and most importantly, won the items you wanted to win. Not everyone. But if you win. didn't, you still have an, you still have other yeah, opportunities. So we got more opportunities. Let's run through it all. Business check. Session two, David Hall collection, is tomorrow night. Extended bidding at 10 p.m. Session three is Saturday. Same thing. Extended bidding. 10 p.m. Tomorrow, our Platinum Auction is launching. Wow. And there it never ends. are some amazing items in ends. there. We've had some incredible auctions. I think this might be the finest. I um, think there's 20 or 21 lots that have uh, 10, 100,000 estimate or above. That's correct. So, so that is an incredible there number. Are literally quality. dozens of six-figure items in there. And also, that has a session, too, that has stuff that it's more in the $3,000 to $7,000 range. So Up to six figures, though, too, even in session two sometimes. Yeah, there's some of that there's session a few, two stuff. We does. snuck a few six-figure lots in session two, also. Um, so it's just an incredible auction. Uh, if you're into collecting that and you collect at that level, it's for you. If you just are a fan of collecting and of sports history, it's amazing to look at these items and read the descriptions. And if you're <laughs> at the National, you can see them all. We're going to have the whole auction on display at the National booth, 824. In addition to, we'll be giving free appraisals and just talking hobby. 
Uh, Tony will hang out with you all day long. I'll be there the entire you. time. Yeah, looking forward to it. It's always if it's you're a fan of the show, of you need to come meet Tony and oh, get an God. autograph and take a selfie with him. He'll do it. We're come probably, on down. We're though. probably gonna set up. Uh, come on. Come down. on down. You're selling mattresses. <laughs> 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 it's our Labor Day special. Yes. Can we get uh, one of those patriotic outfits? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Red, white, and blue outfit for Tony. I want a big uh, top hat, though. Can we work on that? Yeah. So we All also right. have our vintage sports photography auctions going to launch tomorrow. The catalogs will be coming out shortly after that, but some incredible photography in there. All sports and some non-sports, some entertainment, some political stuff in there. Very cool just to look at it. I was looking through it today, proofing the catalog, and it's unbelievable. So you can check that out. That will be on display at the National as well. We've got David Hall Part 2 in September that has that uh, Ty Cobb with the Ty Cobb back and the Honus Wagner card. That will be every single card in there, over 500, will be at the National. No so no shortage of auctions. David I mean, Hall. I've never remembered a time in this that in the sports department having this much going on. David Hall Part 3 is in de December, <laughs> and that is the quality section, and you can see those at the National as well. And then, of course, in October, our memorabilia auction's coming up. We're taking consignments for that right now. Give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about what you have. And then in November, another card auction just like this one. So if you're bidding in this and you have great material, you say, I want my material presented like that to the entire global community where people can bid and have an auction closing show with Tony Yeezy, that's where you need to put it in. I will, I will have, I'll be better dressed next time. <laughs> I promise you, I will have better attire on than As the person who wear. puts these shows together, I will guarantee you he's going to be wearing something <laughs> much more interesting next time. Yeah. So we're taking consignments for those two sales, and uh, we actually have a few card registry auctions that are being coming up in the fall too. I can't they say anymore. They don't tell me this. Stuff I can't either. say anymore. That is it. But we're gonna have a few more auctions because we don't have enough auctions going on. I guess not. We so, need to work harder. Is what the exact stuff. Exactly. Right and as always, we do free appraisals on anything in all our departments. So 35 departments, whatever you collect, and check out our archive. Every item we've ever sold in any department in over 30 years, you can go online, look at the complete description, the full enlargeable images, the date of the sale, and what it's sold for. It's an incredible resource for any collector. Uh, you're at a garage sale and you see a copy of The Great Gatsby and it looks old and you wanna find out if it's a first edition and worth anything, We've got a rare books department, incredible rare books department, and you can go through, look through their archives and compare the items, and maybe you get a $2,000 first edition Great Gatsby for five bucks. It's a great price guide, and it also shows trends. Yes. You, know, you can see what the 52 tops went for seven years ago, five years ago, and then today. So yeah, it's a wonderful price guide and a great reference. And so to close, we need to thank all of our consigners for this card auction and all the auctions we have. We couldn't do this without you and we appreciate your trust in us and it is an honor to handle your material. And to all of our bidders, we couldn't do it without you guys either. Um, we hope you guys enjoy the auctions. And of course, to our staff, not just our sports staff who puts the auctions together, who's also helping us out, our operations staff who is all behind the scenes. They are the hardest working people in the they business. Are. They are back there giving us all what we need. Uh, me, the, the value, now. Tony, whiskeys. So um, <laughs> that's where the entertainment comes from, folks. The same natural. No, just <laughs> kidding. But uh, they are the best in the business. So shout out to our operations staff. And they are going to be at the National too. And if you enjoy what we do, you should definitely walk up to one of our operations people and tell them thank you. And our Facebook uh, team here. Of course. I saved them for last. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean the to. The best I'm for last, as we said, our social media team, our videography team. Um, Magnus. Emily Taylor, Taylor and Colin. I'll go and call out their names. You guys wow. probably have never seen them before, but they do so much work behind the scenes. They put this all together, and they have to stay here till midnight and listen to us blather on oh my God, all like, night Come long. on, guys. Get done with this. And maybe they're sports collectors. Maybe they're not. We don't know. Maybe they're but, going to be, though. <laughs> probably not people who want to listen to four hours of it, <laughs> but uh, they do it, and they have a good time, and they are incredibly helpful, and we could not do this without them, so thank you guys very much. We really appreciate appreciate it um and thank you to all of you who are still watching especially dustin johnson dustin out johnson 
Think of some more trivia, you. buddy. Greg Rohan, if you're still watching, thank you too. <laughs> and to anyone who watched, asked questions, or hits us up on social media, we really appreciate it and we love interacting with you. Let's do it more. And let's we'll see you in Chicago, guys. I can't wait. We'll see you in Chicago. It's a hell of a town. Gene and Jude's hot dogs. <laughs> Good night, everyone, and Take thank care. you. As the number one sports collectibles auctioneer in the world, Heritage Auctions has offered many of the most iconic pieces of sports memorabilia to ever be auctioned. Collectors choose Heritage time and time again because of a simple formula for success. Heritage presents the finest collectibles on earth to the widest possible audience. Jackie Robinson's 1947 game-worn jersey, the year he broke the color barrier. Muhammad Ali's fight-worn gloves from the 1965 famous Phantom Punch Bout with Sonny Liston. The iconic 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle card, graded mint nine by PSA. Mike Aruzioni's game-worn jersey from the 1980 Miracle on Ice. But it's not just the incredible items from the history of sports that make Heritage number one. It's also the people at Heritage who are dedicated to a hassle-free experience for the collector who has decided to sell. Holding Mike Aruzioni's hockey stick, the very stick that he used to score the game-winning goal against the Soviet Union and the Miracle on Ice, it's, uh, it's, it's indescribable. It's, it's really a... Uh, it's why I do this. It's why I love this. These world record results are made possible by our superior marketing resources. With more than 1 million online bidders from 219 countries, every consigner has access to a tremendous global audience. Heritage reaches this audience by spending more than $20 million annually to promote our auctions. These campaigns utilize global advertising, social media, and publicity to attract the widest possible audience for your consignment. In fact, we often find that our world record prices are paid by new collectors who learned of our auctions through national or international press outside of the entrenched hobby. So why should you choose Heritage? More than 45,000 consigners have chosen Heritage to sell their treasures, and they return to do business again and again in part because each and every one has received a settlement check in full and on time. From such storied collections as those from Lou Gehrig, Stan Musial, James Naismith, Jim Thorpe, Jerry Kramer, Mike Aruzioni, and Brooks Robinson. With more than $150 million in assets, Heritage provides unquestioned financial stability and flexibility to offer generous cash advances to consigners at any time. From consignment to settlement, we strive to make your experience a pleasant and profitable one. When the time comes for you to sell one piece or your entire collection, the choice is clear. Heritage Auctions. Go to ha.com slash consign for more information or call us at 1-877-HERITAGE that's 877-437-4824 to arrange your private, confidential consultation. 